dice. Amen, our soon coming king. Indeed, amen, he is above everything that I can think, think of, and above everything that I have experienced. And so I worship God, amen, with no apology. I love what God is doing in my life. Because, brethren, um, I, 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 I love the words of God. Because it's the words of God that guides. When I look at the Apostle Paul, he was, um, he was a ragamuffin. He was a bad man, a rough man. I don't know if you ever read about Paul. Paul consented to the death of Stephen. He was a murderer. And the saints feared him. The saints feared him. And what I noticed is that God knocked him down. Yeah? And when he got up, he could not see for about three days. But God knocked him down. And when he knocked him down, he put him out of commission for about three days. The Bible prepared the heart of Ananias. And he prepared the heart of some persons to go seek about him. And when the man of God went there, he touched him. And the Bible said the scales fell from his eyes. And Paul went into deep study. And he started to spread the gospel till the people were wondering, wasn't he the same one who used to persecute the church? And God turned his life around. This man said, when I think to do good. The man said, the good that I would, I do not. And the thing that I should not do, that I do. Paul said of himself, Oh, wretched man that I am. God also said that me, man, in our best state, we come like filthy rags. So I just have one thing to explain and say to you. Always humble yourself. Because God can talk to anybody. Preacher Green, I respect you. You have never given me anything to think otherwise. I want to tell you this, that God can speak to you. But John, any day God cannot talk to me, I'm lost. But Brother White says you're in a wilderness and you're, God lost you. If, 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 if he cannot say something to you. But do you know the honor? Do you know the honor when God remember you? Anybody ever feel lost and God remember you? He says you're a, you're a son and not a bastard. And so I'm going to ask us to read the words of God. Jesus called Peter from his life of fishing. Jesus almost everywhere you see the Christian faith. If you look at the seat of the Vatican, everywhere they big up Peter. Because Jesus big him up. And right before Jesus came off the scene, he looked right into Peter's face. And he said, I rebuke you. He rebuke Satan and I speak him a look pan. Well, no, all right. And Jesus did not forget. When he came back, oh, bless the name of Jesus. He found him and he said, Love us thou me more than these. And he asked him three times. He said, feed my sheep, 
feed my sheep, feed my lamb. And so today I'm excited that the church is not a nominal church. I want the church to listen to the words I'm saying. It's not an ordinary place. It's a warning to every member to live. This morning, God of mercy, God Almighty said, get yourself ready to stand in one spot. <laughs> so God, what are you talking about? While I was here thinking, Evangel called me and he said, preacher, I'm sick. My face is swollen and I'm not going to come. Mr. 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 Devil, you're a liar. Because Deacon will be here. And while I was yet speaking, he called me. And he said, we're not coming out today. And he told me why. He said, oh, in the name of Jesus. But I thank God that church is not run by man. This is the church of the living God. And the gates of hell cannot prevail. So the church is not a nominal church. It's not the regular ones where you go and you take over. It's not the regular ones that you go and... Um, no, it's a, it's a real place. Where, the, where we want God's honor to dwell. And so thank you for your patience. We have Bridging, Bridging, it says, think it not strange concer concerning the fire trials. Bridging, this is not even football. This is, this is regular. This is, this is not hard. And I give God thanks that there's no confusion. Okay, and I, there's no confusion for me. I thank God that the Spirit of God spoke expressly. The, the biggest thing, church, is humility. We have to be humble. And Pastor Campbell, brethren, if you notice I walk before you, we have to display it. There's a man who came many years ago and you're over in there. He was a benounced pastor. And he said in his testimony one week in the Sabbath school, he says, I am the second most humble person in this room. That's what he said, Sister Green. And I looked at him because what he was saying is that only Jesus. Yeah. Somebody who is humble, you never, you, I've never heard somebody who is humble say, I'm humble. Once you say, I am humble, you have lost humility. You don't say it, you show it. That's it. And I'm going to ask your church, when the Spirit of God is speaking to you, be humble. Be humble. If everybody lick their head, if every vessel is unclean and you are clean, humble yourself. God will, God will show himself. You don't have to fight no battle. Once you get carnal, you have lost the battle. I'm going to say it again. The Spirit of God can speak to me. And he will definitely speak to me. I love when he talk to me. Talk to me, Jesus. Come in our loss. I want to be saved. But sometimes you're going down the road and you can't see yourself. Because your sins blind you. But when the Spirit of the Lord sees your trajectory, he tries to change you. And so, brethren, it's refreshing to know that God is still in the house. And don't be discouraged, because I'm not discouraged. The Bible said that Caleb still the people. Praise God. Praise God. Be still right now and know that God is God. Be not discouraged. I'm not discouraged. Praise the name of the Lord. Because I've seen the power of the Holy Ghost. I know what I've experienced. I know what it looks like, what it feels like. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. 
Brethren, live because many different things will happen. But we have to live so every stage come we can overcome every obstacle, every stage. I was teaching here once about and two men walking. You remember them? And when they were walking, one was planning to kill the other and then didn't know. But the Lord said, just fast. Do not take your eyes off them. I was teaching. And Bridget, you can go back and look at my eyes. I never took it off them till they walk out. And before I finish teaching, one run, come back in here. And see, I stick the gun, stick. That the other one set him up. Bridget, the Holy Ghost is real. Oh, praise his holy name. I've seen a man come to subvert the church. Y'all don't know because I don't tell you everything. He come from behind and it never worked. So he come in the church and when the Holy Ghost move, he have to sit through the entire teaching lesson and just be quiet. I've seen it. So I'm going to say it again. You're not going to get me through the baby and the bath water. The Holy Spirit is needed in the church. And it is real here. Amen. You don't have to tell me. I experience it. God has touched me with it. Yes. I've seen the fire. And I know what it feels like. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Glorify God in this house. Amen. I have seen. Great miracles. Right here. I've seen sister came to church and she said it was a first Sunday fasting and she said I want deliverance. I need answers. And she came to the altar. And in the morning when we started out the fasting I started the fast and I asked, is there anyone who is led to lead the fasting? And Sister Baxter got up from the back and when she stood at the podium, Sister Anne, the Lord moved Sister Anne and covered her up and carried her back to her seat. Now in the sight of an individual, you may think that Sister Baxter is a sinner or that she did something Wrong. But the Lord tell her, no, no. And put her back at her seat. I was there. Praise his holy name. What happened next was that Evangelist Clark was sitting at the drums. We never have as much drummy as we have now. Evangelist was playing the drums. And Sister Anne took him from the drum and put him where Sister Baxter had volunteered to be. And the Spirit of God moved her from that spot. And put her back at her seat in the back where she was sitting. And move on from the drum at the old church and put him at the podium. And the fasting went on. And in the afternoon, this sister walked in. And she walked in and she said she wanted a special prayer. And evangelist called Sister Baxter, who was moved from that early post to pray for the sister and the spirit of God enveloped took over sister Baxter and when she prayed that night in cup down in her soul the church was on fire and the lady knelt at the altar and when the prayer was finished she stood up in herself and she said in front of the entire church I am leaving here more confused than when I came. Sister Baxter was walking off this. The, 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 imagine that she was praying like up here. And before her feet, she was like this when he said it. Because I was watching. I'm sitting at the keyboard to the side. I could see everything. And before she sit, she turned around. And she said, I was there. And then she talked out every single thing. The lady had a son. He, he was about 25 at the time. We had to catch him from jumping off the third. Um, we are at the top. We have to catch him from jump off at the top. Because they real everything. And when she finished, she said, the spirit of God is here. The spirit of God. She helped clean the evening. 
She said, God is here. God is real. God, the tongue, she didn't want it. And when she get it, she was so, she said, oh my God, I got Jesus, I got, I'm going to fix that. I'm gonna, it was, so I've seen it. Brethren, this is nothing. We have been here before. And God came through that day. And that lady said, the word is true, but it's hard. And she never changed. And she moved to Florida. And within a couple of, she died. She passed away. Because the word wasn't good enough for her. Lest you forget. It's the same church of the living God. The pillar and the ground of truth. This is not a nominal house. This is not Presby or Angley or Kato. This is real. Oh, I've seen the power of the living God. I've seen fire. Holy Ghost, I've seen water. So lest you forget, this house is serious. Every body have to start to live. Press reset. We got to go up higher. But I'm encouraged. Because the dragon was wrought with the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Which keeps the commandment of God. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Shall I close with this? That Jesus looked at Peter. One that he brought to the month of transfiguration. And he rebuked him. Jesus looked right in Peter's eyes and rebuked Satan. So God can rebuke anyone that we near. And that's the word the Spirit of God wants us to understand. Uncleanness starts in the heart. Somebody told Jesus, why the disciples don't wash their hands? And he said, when you eat, you're done by two and it come out. But what's in your heart is what defiles you. Is what makes you unclean. Unforgiveness. Murmurings. M murmurings. Unforgiveness. Rudeness. It started here, sir. So many walk around and says, Look here, brethren. I have said it last week that I got married as a virgin. Do you know how unclean I am still? Sister Green, if you, should, if, you could, if you could see some of the foolishness I put before my eyes, may God have mercy on them. You don't get what you're saying? So sometimes we live a virginity, but God, our eyes are whores. You don't know what I'm preach. We know as we mouth is so unclean. Our thoughts are filthy rags. The highest form is the highest. The Bible talk about a form of godliness. Is when you become numb. To the reality that is in front of you. When you are so numb. That you cannot see or hear anything that God has to say. That is a deep problem. So. 
I give God thanks for the church of the living God. The preacher in the day Sunday at convention said this cannot be a nominal church. And brethren, these are, this is easy. What you gonna do when a man come in there say, with a gun? We have to be sharp. You have to be equipped spiritually to deal with hey, principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. So let's go back and seek and do more for God. So in time of adversity, he'll do more for us. But I'm not discouraged. In fact, I'm excited that church is still church. And I understand, and I always say, I'm going to tell, tell you, said, I was driving in Jamaica the other day. And there are about six little puppies and like dogs in the, the street. And as soon as I pass, they start to run all around. And I stop, and all of them stop. And I moved and started, and I stopped. I, I was just playing with them. And I said, oh, it's really true. The, the dogs don't bark after a car that it stopped. It's the one that is moving. I'm going to say this. The enemy, you, you see, when the church is nominal, the devil doesn't have to worry about you. Because every, every slackness can, fornicators can come and sit down. Adulterers can come and sit down. Um, all kind of things can just come and just be okay. But you see, when you're trying to live above the fray, above sin, above the ordinary, you will be attacked. So I'm encouraged. So today we get into today's lesson. Somebody praise God. Give God three hallelujahs. Give him three hallelujahs. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. So to I greet ministers who are online and those in the house. Give greet all the saints, all the, 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 the visiting loved ones. Children, I greet you. Time is far spent. Can you give me the subject, scripture reading, and the members of today's lesson? Together, please, everybody, please stand. Could you all repeat it in the interest of time? Do. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise his holy name. Somebody worship God. I love this memory verse here. Praise him. Praise him. And I love this topic today. Thank you, Brother White, for a lovely comment this morning. Amen. He brought us from, I think the sister Fraser repeated the two big things, but I just wanted to say the one. Don't let me, God lost you. Bridget, I was, it is, it, it, I want to serious. Don't make God lost you. Because when God lost you, he will have you spinning at one spot. You've come through the door so many times, but he can, can lost you. I saw a man, I saw a man, I was talking about him. He's a professor, he was from Russia. A, a Russian professor that I had at school, Brother Green, Preacher Green. And I've said it. I'm going to say it again today because it's warranted. He came into our class. And he said, Sister Robinson, you don't even have to use the textbook we didn't give because we write better book than them then. No humility. <laughs> this man was talking about history. This man, I remember down in it, Sister Rose. This man said that this Jesus when I talk about, what is Jesus? Bridging when he said it, you know, this is in the heart of Georgia. And this was in 2005, 2005, 2006. So we never have all these 
Georgia was more evangelical at that time. So more, about half the class walked out. And he said, they can go. Me didn't stay, come to me, you want to see what really going to happen. So me really stay, come here and say, yes, God, me not, me, I'm going to stay and see what really going to happen. And what I saw, what I saw was that this man said, they can go. But if they miss 10% of the class, they're not going to get the grade anyway. And he said that they're, they're gone because they don't have the knowledge. He said, Jesus never tell anybody that he's no kind of God, he's nothing. He was just a regular person that walked this earth. And so, next week I have him. This week can happen. When I go back in the class, I see him coming. And when he, when he came in, this man was just standing there looking at us. And we looked at him. And I realized that God was doing something. God lost him. He stood up and he did not know what to do, what to say, where to go. He was just standing. After five minutes, do you understand how five minutes long when somebody is standing? People are just looking like, what is going on? And so I went up there and I showed him it's like his seat. He sat. And I saw him want to turn on the projector and he put up his hand like the man where the, 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 the Rehoboam, Jeroboam, like this. And it was just stuck up there. And I get up from my seat again and I press it to turn on. And he looked at me and he looked at the projector and he just sat there. Till the class finished. And we got help for him. And he never come back to class. Hello? The head of the department told us that he had a mystery illness. He's in the hospital. A mystery illness. And he never came back to class. All the people that walked out were not punished. They got a chance to sit whatever they needed to do. And all I needed to do was one assignment to pass the class. Humility is important. Don't make God lost you. That is the one that stuck up most to me, Brother White. Forty days. It took them to go, search the land, go from place to place, and come back to Moses. Forty days. It took them to, do, to cover everything that they needed to do. And in 40 years, they couldn't find back the past. If somebody you never got to bush our farm, probably you don't get what I'm trying to say. Like when you used to walk, you have a shortcut. Unless you come to America for your and, and you go back and your pure house built up today. Let me and Deacon the other day we go. All of the house built up, all the places you used to walk as boys. I'm gonna pick mango, they build up house now. Imagine God lost them where they're walking around and the past and the spies past. They could not find it. Cause God black it off. The, weak, the roughest thing is if God black you off spiritually. You see, blasphemy is real. That is the one sure way God can lock you off. When you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. In Matthew 12, they only thought about it. And Jesus says, me know what I think. And then Jesus says that every sin that man do will be forgiven. But there is one sin that you can do which will never be forgiven in this life or in the life to come is when you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Let me say you can't blaspheme against the Father. You can't blaspheme against the Son. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness for you in this life or in the life to come. Repent! So, Brother White, we were blessed this morning. So, with no, further, with no further delay, I must ask, it says murmurings. Bring back the, um, bring back the topic. Delay or deplete the blessing. Praise him. 
Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Sister. Topper. What comes to your mind when you see this particular topic? Give us your thoughts on the subject and also the memory verse together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, all right, so the subject murmurings delay or deplete the blessing. Um, what comes to mind is um, when you <clears throat> start to complain and murmur um, and things not going the way that you think it should, um, the blessing that God had planned for you, it can hinder it. You know, it can take either it take a longer time to come or it just won't come at all. Mm -hmm. um, it, our blessings and the, end, um, and the end goal depends on each and every one of us and how we react to different obstacles and different, you know, mm -hmm. barriers that may arise. Um, when, when Jesus blesses, we often talk about, um, he won't, like, we won't look at a little kid and give them a car. Why? Because they don't know how to handle it on the road and so forth. And so when, we, when we're going through the, 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 the minor obstacles, Which sometimes major, you know, God is preparing us to handle the blessings that are coming. Um, in our eyes, it seems as if, yeah, this won't happen. This won't make sense. But reality is sometimes I'm saying like struggles, you know, it's it, it toughen you. You know, the different stuff, it help you experience, build wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that is where we need to um, understand that not everything is sent is meant to harm you. It's really to help us along the way, but it's for us to look within ourselves and to have that spirit of um, that spirit of um, thankfulness mm -hmm. and, and all that so that when God blesses, even in the midst of, you know, you can still worship, even in the midst of, you can praise still give God. praise, even though sometimes it can be hard. But just Amen. remember that the God that um, we serve, he's the God who woke us up. And the fact that we are alive and well, that means that's not the end of all the road, that blessings are on the way. It's just for us to be humble enough to, to, to endure and just to wait on the different blessings God has in store. These are my few words in Jesus' name. Praise him, somebody. We didn't praise the Lord, no? Thank you, Sister Tapper. Give her a clap. Thank you for your wonderful uh, comment. Praise God. I love the memory verse. The memory verse says to do all things. All things. Without what? What is it to murmur? Could somebody describe it for me? Jojo, you want to tell me what is murmuring? How does a high schooler murmur? Oh, you hear what you said? When you're murmuring, you say something under your breath. What else? Or like you're like grumbling, like we can hear you, but we can't hear it. We can't make out the words you're saying. We can tell oh, that you're like, so you think murmuring is mumbling? Yeah. Everybody hear what she's saying? Yeah. That's why we're glad for Sabbath school, because we can dispel the myths. She says murmuring is normally done underneath your breath, and nobody can understand what you're saying. So we're agreeing with her then. Sometimes. Ah. Thank you very much. So psst, wait, wait, wait. So, do you, what do you think about murmuring for high schoolers? Do they murmur sometimes? What is, how, how do high schoolers murmur? What do they murmur about? What do high schoolers murmur about? Teachers, Teachers homework. Teachers, homework. Um. What do they say about the teachers? Uh, oh, just, oh, yeah, chores. Chores, work at the house, it works. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah? Oh, like she said, other students. Other students. 
So apparently high schoolers remember about everything. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you remember? Well, so far I haven't. So far. So far I haven't remembered. Like. Thank you, Jesus. So far, she said I haven't remembered. Because I feel like like my classes are pretty good. I'm understanding and uh, stuff like that. So. I love the honeymoon phase. <laughs> Give her a clap. She said, so far I I'm not remembering this year. Because I kind of like my classes right now. Give her a clap. It's okay. It's okay. Um, Sister Baxter, what does murmuring look like for an adult female? An adult female. What does murmuring look like for an adult female? Praise the Lord. Greetings to the Sabbath school. I mean, I could pick Sister Ariel, but I just, because I picked Joanna, I, I was just picking you. For a female, it could be interpreted as nagging, uh, complaining. What? what? Um, this is what why are you smiling with me? <laughs> that sounds true. So she says, if if an she says for an adult female, it may look like nagging. She says, sometimes, but preacher green, we don't identify what it is. We say murmuring, and we may think it's mumbling. So that's not me, but no, we're hearing nagging. Nagging is a part of it. Keep going. Yeah, complaining, being about miserable. About what? Complaining about what? About little things, I mean, that, that irritates you. Yeah. Or um, could be just that, you know, just little petty things sometimes. Um, being miserable over certain things, you know. Oh, miserable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Baxter, why are you enjoying this lesson so much? <laughs> okay, keep going. It's a learning girl. Keep going, Sister Baxter. Um, it's like she's talking and reflecting. She's saying it and she's saying, she's, she's rating herself while she's saying it. I could see her, little, her mind doing that. Yes, yeah, she's examining herself while she's saying it. That's terrible. Because she um, has two, two, two boxes behind her kind of judging her right now. Mm -hmm. Keep saying it though. Um, Speak with authority. Um, I, I think that's for me. That's I, I mean, murmuring is just um, a lot of it is the, the complaining part of it when things are not the way. Um, and I touch on a little bit of what Joanna said. You know, sometimes it's done under the breath. You're not speaking it out. Mm -hmm. It's something that you're just fussing about constantly. You know, just you know, just mulling over and chewing over and all of that. It's going like bubble gum. Almost. It has no color. It has no no. Beneficial, beneficial calories, right? But you are just chewing it, just chewing it. No juice is left in it. Mm -hmm. It's just going. Thank you. Praise God. But a roach. For an adult male, what does murmuring look like? It's rough. Okay. <laughs> because you know, you know, the lesson, when I review the lesson, we understand the fullness of what God had talked about with the people them. I murmur, you know. Them them not them not them not trust. Them not have no trust. Them lose faith. Them get terrified. You see what I say? And you know, the the, the is a it, Murmuring is like a, it's like to me, it's like a disease. It's like, it's like it, 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 it just tear you apart, Virgin. It, it just make everything just in front of you like it just like explode because you know understand who you are and and where you come from. You don't, you don't, you don't understand yourself. You see the murmur, you don't think you understand yourself. I understand where you're there for. That's us how me look on it because rich. I same thing that I say. It's like bleeding without being cut. To Brother Roach. Yeah. So what I wanted to find out, thank you for the introduction, sir. <laughs> is um <laughs> honestly, <laughs> like I want to know what it looked like for a man. Yeah. May not be you, you know. 
You mean that somebody a murmur? Yeah, for, for, when a big man a murmur, what you look like? Why was, yeah, because you gave me a comment on the um, <laughs> subject, which is fine. <laughs> but I want you to tell me what it looks like. <laughs> Honest to God, I just want to know what it looks like for a man. A murmuring man, what does that look like? Boy, I look like a roadblock. No, if you really tell him I look like a roadblock, you, you, you never come up and you can't see. You, you just can't see part of so. you, you just, you just, You just come in like, I don't know if I tell you, bro. So, it's, so it seems to me. It's like darkness, brother. It's like you just can't see. You just have to, you know, you feel. You know, you just can't see something. When, 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 you, when, you, when, you, when you're confident and know boy, you can do something, you'll say, so you have all the things them where you, where you need to do it. Some people just can't see them, them have every, everything where they need all right, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. I was looking for some. But, Roxa, you think you can help me a little bit more? All right, maybe a little bit. Thank you, Brother Roach. Praise the Lord. Brother Roach said, Murmur, you look like a roadblock. Preacher Roach. So, I'm here. I want a roadblock. I see that, Brother Roach. Mr. Man put tire in a road. And I like it. Missy man cut down tree. Missy man cut down a whole tree across the road. But, but that don't help me, right? I want to really know. Preacher, Preacher Baxter says he have a bit. Give me something, Brother Baxter. Um, yeah, my man. Uh, just like what Roach, that sense where Roach said, uh, heaviness. If you bring a, like a, a weight on your shoulder. It murmuring is like, it's like stress. You know, um, frustration. Like, um, you know, I, 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 let me explain, like, Roach, uh, like Please a roadblock. Please don't explain it, brother. Like, uh, <laughs> That's what I'm no, saying. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand what he's... I'm, try, I'm trying to un, um, basically <laughs> cipher what he said about the roadblock part. Okay. Like, like um, um, it's like, it's like you, you, reach, you reach your brink. You, um, you, you, you're so frustrated that you... you you know, the, the, can you murmur? You want, to, you want to murmur? Like, for me. I'm saying for me. You want to murmur, but man, the, 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 man you, just, you just stand up there like a statue, and you feel like, say, man, you want to explode. You know, but it's like murmuring is like just being, uh, you know, <laughs> um, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating, the, a frustration. Um, it's the way that Big, we express our a, Yeah, oh, oh man express. That's, a, that's what I was saying. May, I, may, I, can I, may I help you, Brother Baxter? Help. He may look like this. Yes. You want to help, Preacher? Yes. Yes, Pastor. Please help, please help us a little bit more. We praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Murmur to me is like having... A demon of unsatisfied, of a unsatisfied nature. Jesus. Like, I come from work. Sister Green prepares soup. I start saying that I wanted chicken. In gratitude. She bought me a shirt. And the color is right, the size fits, but I have to find fault. So I start looking at the buttons. Jesus. And I start saying that the button could be a little smaller. <laughs> the Lord provide for me a on a Toyota car is at a you did mention it once. Yeah. With Sister Baxter's son. What the car name? Carola. Cam. Carola Camry. <laughs> right. The Lord prov. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, man. The Lord provide one of that. Yeah. Little easy going cheap one for me. And it is taking me to Timbuktu without giving any problem. But each day, me get up, me start quarrel, say, so me want a Benz. Me no stop saying, a Benz, a Benz, a Benz, a Benz. And I take no time out to give God thanks for the faithful car that is taking me to the east, to the west, to the north, and the south. I think that is murmuring. Last one before I sit. 
The Lord provide for me a good wife. Mm. But I tend to want to go there, go mix myself up with. Not that I'm putting down people, but you know, some people, you know, mm. like they could really be the helper. Mm. Right? And you go there and I stop right there. <laughs> Anybody get what's going on? Amen. Praise his name. Sister Tanjana, what does murmuring look like for a single person? Single person. Give her a mic. Thank you, Brother Green, for being practical. Anybody get how oh, man can murmur? Anybody here how oh, a sister can murmur? An adult. She, I want to know what a single person. What does murmur look like for a single person? Try to praise the Lord. Praise him. Greetings in Jesus' name. Greetings in Jesus' name. Um, as a single person, I guess murmuring could be... Um, I feel like for me, because I don't say a lot, um, it can be your mind. Mm. Um, you, you're constantly thinking um, about what could have been, what should be. Yeah. You're, you know, just going over those different things in your mind and you feel... Um, like you should be at a certain point in your life. And so you have that constant nagging thought or that um, frustration that's upon you. And it could also be um, just trying to do too much, I feel like, mm -hmm. um, instead of just waiting on God and being of good courage, you take on things that were not for you and were not meant for you. You try to put yourself in certain situations and just be hasty. Mm. I feel like that kind of attitude is um, a way that you can murmur. Give her a clap. In everybody that spoke, I'm seeing a common denominator. That most people who murmur, they don't know exactly where they stand. Like Israel, right? They were not used to the position that they were in. They were used to being flogged. That generation was used to being beaten. The preacher said it this morning. They were used to slavery. Then get up, somebody tell them what to do, when not to do it, how to do it. I want the church to hear me now. Somebody tell them when to wake up and when to go out in bed. Somebody tell them when to work and when to stop work. I was then tired if a person don't say don't stop, they can't stop. They used to somebody over them all the time. All of a sudden, they're in this middle of this open free range with nobody beating them. Somebody carry food to them. If they carry food, come, they get food. If they don't carry food, come, no food, no come. So now, they're in a new position, a place where they're not, it's, there's a place of discomfort. And when they're standing there, they start to think. Because murmuring starts in the mind. That's what I'm realizing today. Murmuring starts in the mind. The nagging doesn't start out with your mouth. It starts in your mind. You have said it 20 times in your brain before you say it with your mouth. When you come in and you saw the shirt that Brother Green is talking about, you already decided to say about them too big. Man on a clown. And so, you, you realize that, oh, let me go through the motion and try it on. Hoping that it wouldn't fit, but it fit. Because your wife have sense. Hoping that the color is not right, but you already, you already told her that this is a favorite color. And everybody knew that for the last 40 years. So you can't say that. But the button ain't just big. To you alone. Children that I can't stand. Oh, they're messy and they, we can't deal with them. You forgot 
20 years ago when you were praying and crying. God, please. I need a little joy. The child that you're telling to shut up. You were telling them, say, kuka, kaka. Say, daddy, daddy. You were begging them to talk. No, they're talking. You're telling them, don't talk. Y'all forget? I see them every week. I see, the, I see, the, I see them trying to talk to, to um, Sister D. To, Luz, to Lucia. Lucia is just a, just a talk. See her there? See her there? Do her thing. Bridget, I'm happy for Lucy. Because Lucy does look at you. Does not do her thing? She, she'll jump and do, she'll do everything. You know what would I said? If she don't do one thing. Murmuring comes when, Bridget, as a minister now, when you look at me, I'm going to cry. This man, I, I miss them. I miss Sage and, because I'm looking for some sound to be coming from over there. Bridget, because that sound will be transformed into worship. At some point, they're listening, they might not know, but they're, they're getting used to the rhythm of church. So when you hear the laughter, and it's, it means the church has a future. If I hear, yeah, hear the church all, I will soon run out. Do you get it? If everybody are yawn, but when they hear look at chatting and look look at children, when she a child do A B C in our church, a good something. But the pastor without vision sees us as a child making noise. Me not say that. I see. Thank you, Lord. We have a future. Glory, Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When a high schooler says that murmuring is mumbling, it's an opportunity to teach her. So what I found out, Brother Fraser, is that murmuring starts in the heart and it happens to you, especially when you are lost. When you're in a place where you're uncomfortable or you're, very, or you're too comfortable. And so today's lesson is structured to identify murmuring. To name it properly. To rename it so that we know what it is. And I'm declaring to the church that murmuring is not only mumbling. Murmuring is not only what you say. Murmuring is sometimes what you do. Sometimes your wife didn't hear you, but God see you. Praise the name of the Lord. Bridging, bridging, there was a point when I was ungrateful. I didn't like tea. And my mom used to give me the tea. Mr. Troy in the plow spot. He said, oh, you drink the tea so fast. God is good. But that was a kind of defiance, a kind of murmuring that was not spoken. And some of the, some of the attitudes we have, we don't say anything. But everybody know it. God is watching you. So hence, this, day, this morning it says, Whither shall I flee from your spirit? God sees it. God sees high schoolers. When your parents talk to you, and you said, Yes, mom. Yes, dad. But when you look at you, you say, Oh, Lord, I've never done anything common or unclean. Sorry, oh, Lord, I never do anything common or clean. Never clean. I never clean, Lord. I never clean. Come on, pick up the trash. Yes, I will pick up the trash. But if you do it in your own time, John John, or anybody else named that start with J, it's a kind of murmuring. Because your mother and your father provide for you. They have a right to say something to you. See, they were 16 before. They were your age before at some point. And what you're going through is not ancient to them. They un they've been there. They know what you're going through. So when they give you an advice, it's because they love you. But when you lock the room, I go... Because men, we kiss our teeth all the time. We are kiss teeth kissers. Murmurs. But the boxer say you stand up. With the frustration on you. So they are not saying anything, but we can't see it. But anger rests in the bosoms of fools. It's not appropriate. Murmurers. And what the lesson today is saying, to shift it a little bit, 
is that when you do that, you delay your blessing. When you act angry, kiss your teeth after your wife, do you know that you delay your blessing? Instead of kissing your teeth, kiss your wife. Anybody get what's going on? And when the when when you when the the opposite the other side of it happens, it's the same thing happen. There's a blessing that would have been there, but it's delayed or denied because of your attitudes. Children is the same thing. When your parents are trying to grow you and raise you, and defiance is a type of murmuring. And you do that kind of attitude or behaviors. When it's time to get something, what do you think happened? My mom taught me a lesson young. She said, Um, please calf suck the most milk. So let's talk a little bit about getting to the place, church, where we as a people, bless the name of the Lord, can identify it properly and avoid being called or branded as murmurers. There's a way. To turn murmuring into blessing. Turn murmuring into something more positive. We're going to explore those things today. So the objective says to open our eyes to the reality that murmuring is a great deterrent in the lives of believers. Do we agree? Question one. What is one true remedy to eradicate this subtle yet harmful sin? Philippians 4, 11 and 12. Right. Could you, one second, please. This is one of the class teachers, yes. Um, Give her a microphone, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I just have a question. What's the difference between murmuring and just being disappointed in choices you've made? Murmuring and disappointment in choices you have made. It's the mindset. The mindset of disappointment and what you do after that. Because being disappointed is not necessarily a negative thing, you know. It's what you do after that. The, the murmuring is when you keep going on and on. With no plan to, there's no plan to, to change or to stop. You just keep going. The disappointment is the fear you feel when you say, oh my gosh, I made. The, the Bible talk about so many who their heart smote them. David, David after he did his sins, you see Psalm 51. That is a person that was disappointed, but then he says, have mercy upon me, O oh God, according to thy loving kindness. The murmurer can't see himself. The murmurer, the murmurer, just go on, go on, till they become their personality. And we put it up and say, oh, they're miserable. It's called euphemism. Instead of saying somebody dead, we say, hey, passed away. Instead of saying somebody, um, he kicked the bucket. So nobody even know what you're talking about. But when you're a when somebody says you're miserable, it means that your murmuring has become a part of your lifestyle. So you're identified by it. So if some, I don't know your, your nickname at home, but if you're called Mrs. Miserable or Mr. Miserable, you're a murmurer. If you have blood pressure problem because you can't stop worry, you're a murmurer. Oh God, you don't know what I'm going to teach. But this is what I'm saying. Stop worrying. So Sister Clark, the, the feeling of disappointment is natural because you made a poor choice. Oh my God, I should not have done that. God, I bow before you. I am weak and lowly. I'm, a, I'm dust and stone. God, lift me up from this position. Do me, I beg you. That's a different thing than continuing in it. The, the murmur is the one that, trans, that transcends disappointment into discouragement, depression and keep going and going and you add every deed to it. You're not satisfied with just being disappointed. You turn it into depression. And discouragement and additional stress and blame and, and you keep adding layers and layers and layers. Murmuring is a building. A hotel, a high rise building with layers upon layers upon layers. And you go up the elevator and you come down the elevator. When you're tired, you take, you take the steps. 
So Sister Clark, I think in my opinion, disappointment is kind of a natural feeling. But disappointment kind of ends with stopping. Where, you, where God is at the, 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 the period right there. This, the full stop where God is there. And you say, you know what, God, I know myself. I'm so disappointed in this choice. But God, Lord, help me, Jesus. I've wasted it. Help me, Jesus. I know what I am. Know that I know, I need you, Lord. You're getting to that place where you, you leave it in God's hands. Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. The problem is when now you, you take up your start to say, you know, say, a generational curse. You know, say, for a long time, you know, say, you know, say, you know, say, my grandmother, friend, granny, sister, they do that, wouldn't be like this. And then you start to build up on it. And you have a second story building on it. And the devil live in it. Two story. And when you start to say, okay. Then every night you start to drill it. Drill it till it become a part of your dreams. The devil now have bed in your hotel. And key card. And you keep building and building and building and building. And that's a problem. So I'm saying to the church. Don't let disappointment turn into a negativity that is so deep where you can't focus on anything else. It's consuming your mind and your space. Yes. So it becomes a mindset that you have to stop. And so murmuring and disappointment difference is the mindset. The one to stop and leave it in God's hands or the one to let it perpetuate and keep going and going and going. Feel better? Well, I mean, yeah, what do you think? What do you think? Is the light. What what Ethan John was saying? I thought it was it's natural to be disappointed, like you're saying, in choices that you've made yeah. and and I mean I understand what you're saying. If it's prolonged then you turn it into something different. But I was just saying the way she was putting it out, it doesn't necessarily have to be you're murmuring because you're disappointed. And you're, you know, because like in yourself, you can say, boy, I shouldn't have done that or whatever. I mean, and you could pray about it or whatever, you know. But my point is that is not necessarily murmuring. Oh, I understand. It's but here's the thing, Sister Clark. My thing, church, and I want to tell you, like sometimes there are moments in your life that you miss, the blessings that you miss. And I'm not saying that God is so cruel where once you miss a window, there's nothing that can happen after that in your life. I'm not saying that either. So please dispel that as I'm saying what I'm saying. But I think about, for example, um, when I met my wife, for example, and the fact that she was worshiping. What if she was one of those who was sitting at her seat just thinking about like, woe is me. There's nobody that could identify her for me to go find out who this person was. Do you get what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to be like Rebecca who is, you're, you're in, the, your, your whole life is not centered around how disappointing or disappointed you are. But instead of moving up out of that thing, the brethren, I'm, I'm, I'm warning us not to, not to dwell. So it says somewhere dwell where these are bound, but my prayer, my aim is higher ground. We can't, no, don't stay down there. No, don't no say, I'm disappointed. I make everybody, oh, I'm so disappointed. Yeah, you were, you pray and you leave it and you move on with your life. No more, oh, um, yeah, this is my seat of disappointment. And everybody come around and I talk, I do a friend them. Anybody remember? Seven days I sit on look and Job. See them here? No, say one thing. Are you okay? <laughs> Sister Rose is looking at me. Sister Lenny, are you okay, Sister Lenny? You taking me in? Okay. I'm not, I'm not telling anybody in here to sit down and mope over disappointment. It's time to get... But anybody remember David? So David messed up with Bathsheba. And David, she got pregnant, she had the child. But the prophet prophesied and the child was sick. David took fasting for it. The whole time he put their life in the man, in the fast, 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 fast. Maybe at that, that time he write Psalm 51. But he was dear, dear, dear. When he put the dead, they said, we can't tell him. We cannot tell David. Because if he not, him not eat right now. If we tell him, he won't just turn over. Do you know what they did, brother Troy? When they died, and the David cinema, a box of fruit on him. He said, what happened? The child, he said, okay, get some bread come. Get some, get some water come. Get some wine come. Get some sit down. They said, watch it. The man said, me see the Lord with everything. And God said, I'm going to die and he die. So, me, me might meet him in the next life, but this is it. And the man, get her back. 
Come on, man. That's what I'm saying to you. There's a point where you are disappointed. There's a point where you feel a little bit down. That's normal. But then there's a place where this disappointment can transform into murmuring. When you make it perpetual. And make it your home. And make it your demeanor. It becomes perpetual. And then people say you're miserable. Are your face frowny frowny or you look sad or... Uh-uh. But you know, I'm trying to tell you that murmuring is not only verbal. Your body language is also. You can't have a murmuring body language. Somebody attack to you, walk down about your business. Your husband attack to you, start to sing, or your wife start to talk, and you start singing amazing grace. Murmur! Imagine my wife attack to me now. Because something happened and she attacked to me. Amen. See, I'm the, but you're not in the church, I'm not singing, so you know. Yeah. I'm going to try to sing like that, I'm going to bless somebody. But me, no. <laughs> and then, but you know, someone, someone will not tidy the island, we will not clean. But as soon as a wife wants to talk to you, you start to clean up everything. Oh, no. yeah. How sweet. <laughs> you turn farmer, me mechanic, <laughs> cook, <laughs> lawyer, <laughs> You start to be large with because your wife wants to say something to you. Or your husband, vice versa. I am declaring to us that murmuring is not only verbal. It's also, it's also you can see it in somebody's action. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. If I see you and I don't talk to you, I malice you. I'm a murmur, you know. Because God has provided you as a friend for me. And I decided that I don't want to talk to you. God, God is not. But you didn't say God different from me. No? The Bible said God follow the rain and the just and the unjust. When rain fall, I don't want to sit only fall over my house. Can you imagine that brother Baxter? Everybody. Wicked. Get, everybody get rain. So sister Rina, I know what you're saying. That sometimes disappointment with the disappointment um, angle, um, and and brethren, I I am a say, I'm saying talk about it, but then have the mindset to move forward, because once you get settled in that spot, it becomes murmuring. Question one: What was preacher? What is one sure remedy to eradicate the subtle yet harmful sin? Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm Philippians 4, 11 and 12. So not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatever state I am, where it to be content. I know both how to be abased and know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer need. Brother, Brother Fraser, what is one... What is one sure remedy to eradicate this subtle yet harmful sin? Contentment. Anybody get that? Godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Murmurings delay or deplete blessings. Um, thanksgiving does the opposite. Okay. Everybody's kind of writing it down. This is what I want you to do for me. I want everybody to focus now. You ready, Sister Lenny? The first question says that murmuring is sin, a subtle sin. The Bible says that sin is the breaking of God's laws. Which of the commandments then? How is murmuring related to the commandments? I want, my, I want you to put on your hats and correlate it for me. Could you tell me the Ten Commandments? Tell me the, what is the first commandment, church? Thou shall have no other gods before me. All right, Sister Anne, who is your partner? You want Sister to find a crew? And I want to tell me, how does murmuring break that commandment? Because they call it sin. How is murmuring having other gods before me? Okay, what's the next commandment? You should not make graven images and bow down to them. How does murmuring fit into that one? Or does it? You can tell me if it doesn't or if it do. Who wants to take on that one? You and your crew, figure out that. What's the third one? You must, you must take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Who want to take that one on? Sister Tanjani, want to take that one on? All right. 
What about, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? How does murmuring correlate to that? Who want to take that one on? Hello? Sister Wendy, Brother Boxer, Sister Tarp, you, that's a group that raised their hand, take it on. What about the next, under the appearance? How does murmuring break that one? Under the appearance? Which one? Sister Rhonda want to take on um, the honor your parents. What about, uh, you want to take that one or two? Sister Rhonda, please work with Miss Jeria. Who want to take on the next one? Thou shall not. Thou shall not kill. Who want to take on that one? Sister Janita wants to take on thou shall not kill. And Sister Sister Amelia. But, but you clap your hand, man. Sister Amelia said, me want to take on I love that. I love that. Sister Janita, Sister Amelia. Sister Robinson, which one you take on? Thou shall not steal. Sister Julian work with Sister Robin said, Thou shalt not steal. How does murmur? It says it's a subtle sin. I want to know how does murmuring, how do you break the commandments? How do you break, how can you be a commandment breaker by murmuring? And I'm trying to single them out. Thou shalt not covet. Covet. Sister Green, better try, all right? Which one do you want to take on? Is this brother? Does she not commit adultery? Adultery. But a roach work with Miss Miller Roach? Work with Mrs. Roach. What, what is left? Make sure you tell her what, what I was saying, because you got a book. <laughs> False witness. Lying. The Buchanan's were on the line. Take on that one for me. Who's ready? Anybody ready? You ready, Sister Reed? Which one are you looking at? But you know, I don't have to appoint anything. I want you to be thinking. There are only 10 things. No, 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 no. I want you to tell me about year one. Remember, there are 10 commandments. Any group ready with a, with, a, with a thought of the correlation? No, one is fine, you know. One or two is fine. I just want to know how it does. Because this lesson is calling murmuring sin. Sin is a transgression of God's what? Laws. Some people are going to walk out and hear say, why? Look at miserable, look at miserable, I don't know, sin. So we want to know, how are you breaking the commandments? You have some? You thinking? You thinking, okay. I want it to be meaningful. Well, this, this is a deep conversation, people. Sister Mary, how is, how is the group going over there? Look, sounding good? Yeah, you come up with more than one thing? One is fine, but, you know. So uh, if you're on the line joining us today, we're trying to find out how, how, can, how can you murmuring? How could that break the commandments? And we're, we're trying to stretch our brains to think, how is murmuring stealing? How is murmuring... How does it lead to, how, how is it, you know, how, how does it correlate to these sins?
It may not, but it may. You have something, y'all? Yeah? You have something? But it was very creative, you know. You have something? Okay, keep thinking. All right, one group is ready. Good, I'm done. We're ready. Keep thinking because then everyone else is not ready. What time is it now? Okay, we're going to answer questions now. But Riley, what, what are you all talking about back there? Which one? Graven image? Wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a challenging one, I think. Is that, that's not a hard one? No? Oh. All right, guys, volunteers now. All right, let's find a stopping point in five, four, three, two, one. All right, you may not be there yet, but let me see. But the boxer, your team is ready. What, what are you saying? Give him a microphone, please. Sister Robinson's very animated back there. I'm dying to hear what they're talking about. But the boxer is ready. What, were you, what, what, what was that team looking at? What commandment? Um, Sabbath day. Sabbath. Ooh, remember the Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. So the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And we're saying that murmuring is a subtle sin. How does it lead to Sabbath breaking? Or how is it Sabbath breaking? Or how do you correlate those two things? So we, we, we talk about a, 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 a few things, a, 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 a lot of things. Praise God. Um, one was, um, so Sister Tarp? Uh, Tarp was saying, about um, like not having enough time to buy, want to buy bread or something. The Sabbath, come on, find your member, say, you forgot to buy bread. You know, you say, man, if you have more time, you everybody go buy the bread. Mm -hmm. You know, for the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Sister Wendy was just saying a while ago um, about um, how, how church takes so long. Why, 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 church, why didn't you can't do church it? Wow. Why, why, why the Sabbath is so long? Especially like how we have like long sun. Yeah, watch your time. Say, Long soon, I've never so heard that before. I, I can't. <laughs> yes, I, I can't stand this. This, this long. It is so long. And it, it, it's summertime, the summertime, especially. Anybody hearing this? The summertime is long. Anybody hearing what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. Murmuring, yeah. mm -hmm. correlating mm -hmm. with Sabbath breaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're saying that. Man, for this about me to get to buy my bread. <laughs> Man, why this day so long? Man. Four o'clock now, yeah. whatever. Hello, mm -hmm. I love, I love what I'm here. This is, yeah. this is what we're saying. Mm -hmm. We can just go over this lesson, how we do, because it says that subtle sin, mm -hmm. and that's what subtlety means. It sneak up on you, not even know. See, I break Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. You're murmuring, make you break Sabbath. Yeah. Amen. That's what we're saying, you know. Amen. You're murmuring, Joe. You're saying, you person, I'm ready to go to church. Yes. But they didn't hear you. But you're breaking the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to go to them. I'm not going to go to Sabbath make for rest. They want to keep church well. They want to rest. <laughs> they want to cock up their foot and rest. <laughs> Sabbath breaker. Right to God. Murmuring. Mm -hmm. And Sabbath breaking have a direct correlation. What did, so what did Sister Sim say? Um, well, back to a girl in the whole crew. What did Sister Sim say? She she was saying uh, something similar. To what you said about driving. Oh. Um, what happened? You don't have a car. You're waiting on a bridging. Yeah. And you start murmur, say, "Boy, you know, um, you know, if me have my one sitting, you know, when I, when, you know, or when I go to church or whatever, whatever, you start murmur. You know, somebody, you're waiting for somebody to pick you because you don't want it, boss. And I better try. Be I better try always yeah. You know, or something like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah. not, 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 not yeah. Chai. Chai is, is a time guy. He's a time mm -hmm. person. But the boxer, yeah. so what you did say? My one was um, my one was my head was the the, the sub one of the sub the sub at the arm the sub the sun long sun sunset, long sunset, long sun, sun, I like sun, it. Yeah. Give them a clap. It's very practical. <laughs> we got it. Thumbs up for me. I got it. Murmuring is there's a correlation between murmuring and Sabbath breaking. I got it. Whose group is ready? This crew at the front here. What you got? Sister Shirley is their spokesperson. Thank you so much for being obedient. Brother Baxter and the crew, well done. Thank you, Sister Sims and Sister, De Sister, De Sister Wendy for walking all the way across. Sister Cheryl, my dear, what you got? Yes, um, Sister, you know what I'm saying, that when you're the next door and your neighbor. Well, which one are you addressing? For, um, 
false witness. False witness, okay. So everything you never do bother you, but I see him saying you're going like, you know, bother you. Oh. And then um, my one is like, um, I come in this morning and, and you say, Sister Sheriff, everything all right, one to you. Me, me all right, Pastor, me good and everything about my body language, everything about my facial expression, everything about everything to show me shows that I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. But I tell her, say, me all right, but me still a, I'm still a, oh. I'm still a, I'm still a, everything. Uh, Give him a clap, I see it. Yeah. Your, 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 your murmuring attitude make you bear false witness against your own self. You say you're fine, but you're not. How many of us do that? We all do that crazy stuff. Act like we're okay and we're not. Sister Reed was saying that the, the, the neighbor, the, um, yeah, say it again. The, yeah, the neighbors, but, but you, know, you don't articulate it. You just talk about it behind them. And when, it, when you're on them, you know, whatever, it's hypocritical. You say some things you can, the person can change or make the, the, the so no, so so I like that. You you when they, when when you're in front of them now, you present yourself as a as a witness that is in good standing with your neighbor, but behind them you can't stand what go on. Okay, so I see the correlation. Another group that's ready. All right, let me go. Oh, I gotta take this road up for a little bit down down the line. Let me go behind her and take the. Let me take start from the back. Brother, brother Troy is representing. The, the, okay, but I try, but a green sister green. Praise the Lord. Bless him, Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings in Jesus' name. So Greetings. we got um, the last commandment that says, "Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house." Mm -hmm. And da, 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 da. yes, all right. So we we spoke about um, you know the the spouses comparing each other. So the the, the husband want a wife like the neighbor's wife, or the oh, um, wife want a husband like the neighbor's husband. Um, we spoke about. You know, see, you know, see, you can't take care of yourself. Oh, Lord. Uh -huh. We talk about um, wanting a bigger house. So they have um, two car, two car um, garage. garage, and and we have one one car garage, and then Jesus. you know that's, so that's murmuring. Uh, we talk about um, want because the commandment talk about man servants and maid servants. You know, some houses have helpers, so we talk about um, murmuring about you know so the, the work. The work is a lot, so we want helpers to um, like the people them next door. Wow. Um, so, Bridget, what we're seeing is that murmuring is most reflected in covetousness. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Red eye. Yeah, bad yeah. <laughs> I said, bad mind. God have mercy. Anybody see what's going on? So, I am then disagreeing with the author who says subtle. You know, subtle. It's just blatantly out there, and we're not seeing it. But the groups aren't, we are near a minute. Your attitude about Sabbath, your murmuring attitude about Sabbath is Sabbath breaking. Your attitude, your red eye attitude, when you're murmuring, you're breaking the covetous, thou shall not covet law. Because sin is the transgression of God. So what we're learning from the three groups who are presented is that there's a correlation between murmuring and covetousness. Murmuring and Sabbath breaking and murmuring and lying. All right, coming to the Sister Rhonda. Get ready, we'll soon come to you. <laughs> Sister Jolene, all right, give her the mic. Sister Robinson, Sister Jolene. By the way, were you a part of that crew? Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Bless our Jesus. Praise God. We have um, stealing. Thou shalt not steal. All right. And as we know, stealing itself is a sin. Mm -hmm. So what um, Sister Robinson, Robinson. Robinson um, her point was that um, in a household, for example, and you have a husband and a wife, mm -hmm. um, we think about the stealing where it leads to loss and covetousness. Mm -hmm. Because if we have um, a discussion that, okay, this money is for this purpose, but the wife might see somebody with a purse or something that they want, and they start saying that we, I need it, I need it, I need it, and the husband doesn't see it as something that is essential for them to buy. Because of their covetousness and their loss, they will take the money and go and buy it. So that's stealing because they did not agree that the money was for that purpose. Jeez. It was not given for that purpose. And so that's where it comes in. And the other part that we are looking at too is that because I'm so balled up in my murmuring and complaint, I take away from God's time. 
So I'm stealing his time. So I don't find time to pray, time to fast, Jesus. time to worship. I just I'll be in myself, murmuring, complaining, and rob God's time. Anybody hear what we just said here, man? Amen. Anybody want anybody want bridge that's big? It, the, the murmuring and complaining that is taking, sucking up the oxygen out of your spiritual life. So you're not time for fast and prayer because you complain and complain and complain. Wow, I like it. And the, 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 um, so you're stealing from God's time. I like that. And wow. And the, the, the husband-wife argument, the, that little discourse there where you have a plan, but because you don't see it that way. What they're saying is that sometimes these things are not just isolated sins. They're saying that some of these sins, they come, they group up together and gang you up. But the root of it is still murmuring. Yes. You know, get what I want? Yes. They're only stealing by itself, but red eye coming out. Yes. Look at this coming out. Look at that. That's what they're saying. Anybody get the juice? That's what's going on, you know. Yes. So when we say murmuring and murmuring deplete or delay blessing, that's what we're saying. Because when you start to sin, God can't, deal, God can't work with you. Sister Amelia and Sister um, Fraser, Sister Janina, what were you coming up with? Sister Amelia is the spokesperson. Praise the Lord. Bless our Jesus. Okay, so, so Sister Sophie just said something to us. Oh, Sister Sophie is a part of the crew too? No. Oh. She was just saying. She was just butted in. Okay. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> so she was saying like when, you know, when times get rough right. and then you get depressed and then you start having thoughts, and then sometimes you want to, you know, you know, you know. I your, don't know. You commit suicide, you offer yourself. Oh, the suicidal thoughts, and yeah. actually doing it. Yeah, or like, you know, the school shooters, they're like, they not uh -huh. in their right mind, so they will try to kill other people. Mm -hmm. That ours was, those should not kill. That was our thing. Oh, so. that would make sense. I'm like, man, that went dark quick. So, <laughs> so, like, you're murmuring about life. Like, you don't have, like, if you're having money issues, you don't have money issues. So you're like, oh, my gosh, I need some money. Let me go kill somebody. Like, rob a bank and kill somebody. Like, <laughs> that's what they do, though. Like, let's be for real. Let's be for real. Like, you watch the news. Somebody is shooting somebody because they didn't do something that they didn't like. Like, mm -hmm. you're going through a lot. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I like when she speaks. She just argue about it. Like, let's get real done. Let's get real though. <laughs> I like her. I really like this young lady. Sister Amelia, yes. Murmuring lead to murder. The physical one. And young people, murder is not only, the Bible is saying that if you speak, if you hate your brother without a cause, you're a murderer, ain't you? Anybody hear me I say? So it's not only the physical, like what you, cause you described, the, 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 um, the, the step by step that leads up to people shooting up places and stuff like that. But it's also the ones that we do in our minds. When I can't stand you, I don't, I don't like you. The Bible also describes that person as a murderer. And brethren, when you when you don't like somebody, you know just keep. Well, we, we saw we saw um, we saw Amnon and um, the discourse with Amnon and Absalom, the man, David's sons, right? We saw that the Bible said for two years, you know, tell him, you know, you know, you know, do good and bad to him. We know you have people like that, but most people don't like somebody you talk bad about them, murmuring. Which the Bible, says, Jesus describes it as murder. I only want Sister Angie. Mm. She not talk to me today. Can't stand her. Murderer. You're a murmur murderer. Murmur murderer. Write it down. Murmur murderer. Sister, brother, so and so. Brother, so and so. Oh. You give so oh, oh so I say okay I can't st I can't stand him. Still long like Papa I can't stand him. Murmur murderer. Almost be in the same church. I can't stand somebody. Murmur murderer. And brethren, um, 
Please don't make your attitude make people can don't like your space. Yes. Oh, no, no, I'm a teach. See, we, we jump on the murder murder of them. We have some murderies where, oh, God, they're not a behavior. You're not nice to be near. You know, keep your environment clean. Nobody know one there near you. When we say clean, me not talk about back cleaner. Me not talk about trash, you know. Me not talk about your behavior, them. Nobody, everybody, when anybody come in your vicinity, yeah. get corrupted. Nobody know one there around you. So clean up so we can get rid of the murder murderers. So change your attitude so people can, so it's nice to be near. Hallelujah. All right, next group. Thank you so much, Sister Amelia. Sister Anne Group, what you got? Then I'm coming back to Sister Randa, Mrs. Product, Sister Campbell's group. What you got? Ask, ask, De ask Deacon Crew if they have anything, as I did offer it to them. Just text them and see if they have something to say. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Greetings in Jesus' name. Greetings. We had the third commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Oh, Lord. Um, Pay attention. This is real. We had, obviously, when you talk bad about God, um, you would say things like, there's no God, he's not real, he's not doing anything for me, and you, you murmur and complain because you feel like God is not, you know, doing what he should in your life, like the, the Israelites and how they wanted to go back to Egypt. Mm. And that's also blaspheming. So that's how you, you have no respect for God or his, his power or his name. And you can do that verbally or, you know, physically, just not being reverent um, mm. to God. And also the biggest form of taking um, God's name in vain is backsliding. They said that um, no man that putteth his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So when you get baptized in church and you tell the world um, that, and you leave, you tell the world that God is not able to keep you. And, you know, he, he wasn't, you know, yeah, able to keep you. And so you take the name of the Lord on in vain because you... You gave up on your salvation. Just to put a cut of that just by YouTube by itself. Put it by Instagram and when next up name. Don't matter talk with you. It's YouTube shot. Just make it just keep let me tell us free don't get us keep playing and playing and playing. That is so real. That's a direct correlation between taking the Lord's name in vain and murmuring. And remember we say murmuring is not only physically speaking, it's also actions. When you come and your backslide, it's the biggest you ju you just you just tell the words that God God no make sense. Don't come on. Don't run to God. It don't make no sense. And you are directly speaking against God with your actions. He can't keep you. In in no worthy of you. Run from God. That's what backsliding means. Run from God. Because he's not able. Run. Run. Look at sharp. Go at the back. Of them at the deep. Cheap. Deep. I uh, see and say deep. Believe it. Me just be just a come from God. Run. 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 That's what backsliding is. You are murmuring against God. You are speaking against God with your actions. You are telling the world that God is not worthy. You are lying. That's what this group said. It's a common, it's everything combined up now. Lord have mercy. Sister Tanjana, that's a powerful one. I want to reach me. All right. What am I missing? Sister Campbell's group. Then I'm coming back to the middle. Who is in your group? You have a crew right here? Thank you for... Oh. Um, it's so funny, praise the Lord. We get, um, thou shalt have no other gods. Mm -hmm. And um, Sister Julian group says something yeah. to that effect. Mm -hmm. And Sister Tanjana. Yeah. Um, just by what she said. But um, we were saying that when you make the one disappointment in your life, be vocal. And because of that situation where the... Brother Jamal was saying the drum, then tell him not to play the drum. So in our worship, Jesus. in our <laughs> prayer, in our God, do nothing because Which the drum worship, becoming man. God. A big thing, this. And so, you know, that was one thing he Holy said. Ghost. And, um, you know, just as even, you know, we were saying, like, because of you wanted this person, whether you think this man should be your husband, and because of it, 
you know, you decide, mm. say, boy, you know, serve God. You know, it's just like, you, you like, this is my stopping point. Mm. Whether either you're failing something and you decide, you make it become so vocal. consuming and mm. your vocal, uh, you said, I can't go on. God no, have no, God no, have, have no other option to make me, um, you know, what, you know, the impossible could be then in your in your life. So therefore, you you walla in that one situation and don't move forward. So it becomes your God. Mm. So whether your husband, your child, your job, your car, a house, you know, so many things. You know, they never call off a thing. So you know, worship today it is like it's over. It's wow. done. And so, and even when they call again, you know, but I sing because of that one time, because you don't think, you know, mash up your place or whatever the case may be. Yes, it's just, place. you know, it consume your life. And so you make, you think that one thing become your God in a sense. And so I love it. It's a technical, but very clean point. Virgin, it's the same thing. And it's, a, it's the same thing when you listen to like, um, like, like, like couples. You should not be going back to something 20 years ago and it's still the focal point of your disgruntlement that can't make you move. Um, walking out of church because they didn't call you to sing or to do something. Wow. This thing is broader than we think, than we, than we thought. All right, let me have, all right. Um, yes? Open. You have some? Let me hear you. But really, did, did the Buchanan's have anything? Yeah. All right. Open it up for me first. And the readers need to get ready because I just wanted to, I wanted to show you, brethren, that there's a correlation between murmuring and sin. Don't look at it just as a little, that the M word, and it's just out there by itself. Murmuring is sin. And it's not always subtle. Sometimes it's just there. It may come upon you subtle because you don't expect it. But now we're teaching it overtly. You can see that what you're doing is sin. It's not just talk, me talk, I'm miserable. You're a sinner. Yes, Brother okay, Jamal. Pra praise the Lord. Praise so, him. Yes, the Buchanan's also said they had something to say, but from YouTube, yeah. it says that someone said from commandment number four, mm -hmm. you are bent on getting a certain job a particular job because it's not coming forth. You murmur about it because you have to keep the Sabbath. Wow. Anybody get that? I, I, I'm going to get a big job because of Sabbath. You know? yeah, yeah. If I'm in a church, boy, I'm going to pull on all. Oh. Imagine, man, when I, when I get all that, but I, I 80 grand a year now. I eat 90, me just there 58 instead of 60 because of Sabbath. Wrong! You Sabbath breaker. You murmur. Wow. That was good from whoever to tell them the pastor said, well done. All right. Go to the next. Go, go open up the line so we can talk. You have more? Yeah. Give me. Go ahead, please. Is it Deacon or Sister Buchanan? Brother Michael, somebody. Can be Mikey. Praise him. Yes, Deacon. Praise him. Praise him on that time. Praise him. <laughs> Let me greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. Greetings, man of God. God thanks for his love and his mercy towards us. Amen. We just want to give God thanks for everything, Virgin. Yes. As I'm here listening to the to all the speakers about murmuring. I was thinking and say, murmuring is like a car we don't service enough. Jesus. I say it's a care of those service. So more problem keep keep occur. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. More problem keep occur. Below. Because it's just like this, brethren. When you look and say, stealing. A man murmur say, boy, the job now pay me enough. So he take where people are sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody get it? It can't own two tissue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So not many weeks. You're going to get hype over there. We're going to hear nothing. Why go on? Jesus Christ. Dika, we're not here. Dika, I broke up. 
You have to keep the phone in your mouth, preacher. We can't hear you. Yes, I said, I'm people, man. Oh, my God, man. I must say nice, and we can't hear it. Yes, I said, let the people murmur in. I yes. don't realize they're murmuring. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Somebody give you something, and you say, boy, you know, appreciate it. You get what I'm saying? Mm. You're well in need of it, you know. But two, is it two in the in that coming from who you expected? Jesus. Yes, I said, why am I saying that? Give me. You get what I'm saying? You're hungry. You get what I'm saying? I want food, but two you expect by somebody else or some other places. Yes, they ch yes, they chicken. Then you want your hungry now. Then you want sandwich. Yes, I give me. <laughs> Thank you, God. Here comes him. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Oh, Sister Shanna, come to praise him. Greetings to everybody in Jesus' name. Greetings, sis. I was thinking, you know, like if when some, as my husband was saying, when somebody gives you something, I've been in a situation where. I really thought out the gift yes. and gave the person a gift from my heart and they want the receipt to return it to get something else they like. And I'm like, that's really, like, that's really murmuring. You know, you're really ungrateful. ungrateful. And I was thinking as, as a mom, as he was asking earlier, as a wife, like, how does it look when you're murmuring? And I was just going through the list of things in my head and I'm like wondering if I'm murmuring because I don't want to be murmuring. So when I'm like going on and on about the laundry and going on and on about the dishes, I'm like, how can I look at this differently? Like I have so much laundry because I have kids. I have dishes because we've ate, we've been fed. So I am was just thinking about it and trying to talk to myself and, and tell myself everything that I'm facing as a mom, as a mm. wife, to not to murmur, but look at it as a form of, I'm grateful that I have the family to Come take on. care of. Come on. If we didn't have clothes, I wouldn't have nothing to wash. Mm. I'm grateful that, you know, we have the food to eat. Because if we wasn't eating, we wouldn't have no dirty dishes. You know, even though it's a lot to do, you know, and I could get the kids along with me to help, but just always have that attitude of gratefulness. See, when you have the attitude of gratefulness, you don't have no room for murmuring and complaining. So those, these are my few words in Jesus' Can we agree? Name. Can we agree? Thank you so much for blessing us with those comments. They're well received. I love it. If we never have something to eat, we wouldn't have dirty plate to wash. So Bridget, sometimes we focus on the dirty plate versus on the gratefulness that God blessed us with something to eat. I was washing something for my wife yesterday, helping, helping out. Um, as as um, Pastor Brown tell me, is that helping your, helping your wife are your duty, but your wife, I, I can't wife, are the help me. So I say, is it your, your, your household duty are your duty to them? I, I help your wife, I help you. I, I never look at it like that. Are you in a house? I are, are you the manager? The bridge me say, oh my gosh. So anyway, I was washing the pot as my duties. I have a big son to who can, but I give him some other things to do. And when I see it, I was like, well, what are you doing? What happened here? So well, I was saying, them said, no. Thank God for this opportunity because I know what I'm eating is conscious. It's good. Yeah. So you, you, you know, look on the door. There's something here. The, the, and I, uh, focus on the fact that you have somebody who are blessed but can't cook that. Yeah. Some people can't cook that. Everybody get it? Yeah. So what Sister Shan is saying, let us focus on that, what is in front of you now. Yeah. The whole pile of dirty clothes. Yeah. Give God thanks that you have a family. You have a family where you can pile up clothes to wash. Yeah. You have some place where people are not clothes to wear. They just walk on, walk on without clothes. Did anybody remember having one? I remember that. I remember when I have like one, one or two things to wear. I remember that time. I'm not too old to forget. Sister says my name is Gear the Floor. I mean, what's you can mash it up? Uniform. Uniform. And, and, and I'm saying, even till today, 
I'm not going to lie to you, Bridget. I do have enough to change. My kids, the people I work with, they keep saying, oh my gosh, you always wear the same. And I'm thinking it's maybe a, coming from the past where I wear the same thing. Believe me. It's the same. Believe me, church. So I remember when I have one shoes. See, and it's just to go to church. Because, um, yeah. I remember Brother Eva, God rest his soul in peace. Brother Eva make one shoes and he couldn't mash up. <laughs> me play cricket, football, soccer, ball, um, the netball. Me play everything that shoes couldn't mash up. <laughs> and me did that. Me say, Bridget, me, me kick our own rocks to it. Can't move it. Me say, what am I to use about this? Bridget, we call them transit. We yes, don't know transit. And it's an old British bus, then can't mash up. And I said, me and my sister is call their shoes at transit. And Bridget, we have some shoes now. We got some place them PLS and yeah. you, you, as a buy them, you have to dash them away. Oh. We were so ungrateful. Yeah. But we, as a girl, you learn. All right, so Sister um, Rhonda and Miss Jerry, what did you do? What did you talk about? I'm saving her. She's all right. Praise the Lord. Praise him. So, um, what we have is like how murmuring can affect the way we honor our parents, yes. right? Yes. Um, we have a few highlights here. We said murmuring. Let us talk bad about the parents, and the scripture says to honor your parents. Amen. Um, we said it dims the love your parent has for you in mm. your eyes. You know, mm. because we're not getting what we want. We feel like mommy or daddy don't love us. And we're treated less than other people. Could you say the quote you just said? It dims, dims the love your parent has for you in your eyes. Say it again. <laughs> I, want, I want to resonate with the line and with the, with the, with the church. Brethren, this is a quote that we should play. Um, um, Geronda, 2023. <laughs> say it again. It dims the love your parent has for you in, in your, your eyes. eyes. When you talk bad about your parents, or when you talk against them because you didn't get what you want, or because you know of any other reason, keep going. Um, we we spoke about the nonverbal, like giving attitude when we're being corrected, mm. and not being grateful to our parents for what they're able to provide. Amen. Anybody want to stop right there? We can't preach, but our friends, we can't preach, but I wonder what they're able to provide. Um, I was talking to my son the other day about careers, and I was t I told him, uh, and the only other person I told is my wife, but I told him what my earnings were. I said, please don't use that to sabotage me in the future. But I, I just wanted to explain to you that it's a good career. And the point I made with that was that uh, sometimes, church, I can afford, I can buy a sneakers for $300. But me nah do it. All right, listen what me say. Me can shut me eye and try, but me nah do it. Tell you, prime prime man. Me nah do it. My son have the money piled up. The priest brought it upon him the other day, and me tell him, so son, it don't make no sense. Like, well, you, you can't live your life like that. You're gonna you're, you're going on the wrong trajectory. You can't think like that. Even for your money, you still can't do it. Me tell him, so me grew up with some plate. Me see some plate, boy, I take you up and take with your shoes. Yeah. And then take off with them all when I throw up on the wire. But you never see them you don't see them on the wire them and take off you. Uh, brother John, you know what? When you don't see them on the wire, rough things go on. You think say so, then take the horses and dash away. If you want to go on barefoot, bare feet. And then go on with your three hundred dollar shoes. And Mr. Son, don't give nobody the impression that we're rich. And we have we have three hundred dollars for burn and something that you're walking on. So we say, we say, we're not rich, we're not wealthy in the world. We're not doing that, we're not doing that. So we say, son, let us start to think, and oh, we can be more frugal, oh, we can, we can do a little better. Come on, Bridget, teach them, Ophi. Ophi, what are you going to do? Save some of the money. Learn to, to pay a tithe, learn to try to look at half an out of it. Start to think about God first. 
And God will expand and extend your life. But bridging what Sister Randa and Miss Jaria is saying is that when we start from a position of ungratefulness, everything is wrong. You, not even, you, you, you see your parents and not even talk to them, you cut all your eyes because they never give you shoes. Don't matter talk about the F, the sorry, the P. <laughs> the old fella said the F, you know? The P, the phone. Because everybody at school have this, this a model, this a model, this a brand. If I want to flip one, as long as I can't call one, be grateful. Yeah. Sister Daniele, we live in a time when they don't have no phone. But we live in a time when they didn't have internet. And look at me now. I survived. The era without internet. So then I looked at she said, oh God. Don't, the, less time, I don't want to remember that time. Those were great times. You have to talk to people. Praise the Lord. You have to build relationships. But now you have these. Uh. All right. So Mrs. Rudder. I know the time is going, but let me hear from you. You, you may sit, I know you have a journey. You may sit and talk. Praise the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. 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 Like, my husband is six feet, and I wish he was six feet, too, with six pack. And so I go on my phone, and I start to look at, you know, men with... Like bars, six Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs. She said, when she... But she, I'm not going to... She just laughs. She's like... Oh, and they're off. You know what I'm saying? Woo! Oh, and they're off, I'm messing with you. Keep going, keep going my dear. And you, you know, go on the But it's true. In, you go on the internet and start looking for your model. Yes. Uh, what, yes. what you, you know, think that you mm -hmm. want your partner to be. And, you, I mean, you start to nitpick on him and you know, tell mm -hmm. him you need to go to the gym. And mm -hmm. you, start, you start to wonder, what, it, what would it be like to be with somebody with six oh feet tall with God. a six pack? And you can, it might even take it a bit further. Like, my husband don't talk a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I start to think of a time where I have an ex who talk a lot. Mm. And you start to connect back with that person, talking a lot, and then it might lead to you not even realizing that you're being emotionally attached until when you're physically attached. You know, Amen. working at it. Anybody, anybody love Sabbath school? Yeah. 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 talk. All right. Did I miss any group? Yeah. Which group here? Yeah. They talk long time. What you did there? One, two. Sister, you, you group talk today? You group talk? Oh, you, you didn't have a group? Okay. Oh, so she did. Sister, they talk with Sister Baxter. We don't know how much I go on the Sabbath school. I think I got everybody. All right, shall we praise the Lord? What you should take from this is that there's a direct correlation between murmuring and every single sin that you can commit. From, from thou shall have no other gods before me to COVID. Every single sin is directly tied with even the one. The, 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 I love what you said. Because sometimes we think about adultery just as the physically going in the bed. But what she's saying is that even the emotional attachment, it starts from you nitpicking and saying, you should be this tall or you should be this pack or you should be this. And the vice versa. When you always talk about the fact that Bridget, we live together. Your wife bear your children and then you're complaining you're complain about her weight. Yeah. Walk with her. Yeah. Work with her. Encourage her. I'm preaching no woman like everybody. Wait, 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 wait. Nobody like any, any woman like that. No. Find a better way, man. Nobody come ball. You need to do better. And you, 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 we, need to, we need to do better as a church. I'm not saying to ignore things, but I'm saying... We need to know if we talk to one it's a murmur. Do something different. Do it better. Do it a better way. Be, encouraged, be, a, be a source of encouragement. Walk together. Um, encourage um, different, do, do eating differently and stuff like that. What about I'm going to start like say, you, you all perfect. Are you all wrong to you? Know? 
You see some of the people who criticize the other one. <laughs> we need for the better church. Some of we have some hot words to say. Hot words to say. Bridging, bridging is the same thing in marriage. When you tell a man, say, boy, in turn and all, and we had it. Bridging, I up and say, everything starts. You know? Don't be worried, you know, when the man, the man can't, the man can't, everything shut down. Because you, you murmur and complain. If I'm not a joke, it ain't mine now. So murmuring can destroy your very relationship. Because the words you complain about now becomes a cooking pot in your spouse's brain. And when, the, when you said something disparaging to your wife and, and, and you don't treat her or whatever, and then you want to, oh, don't, oh no, my Justin, sorry. Come here, man, I have nothing to do with marriage. Oh, let's go back then. So when you, when you start to murmur and complain, it resonates with your spouse. So stop it. The Bible talk about it. Banji quoted last week. It's like a constant dripping of. Some of we brethren, you know, we don't drip a thunderstorm we are carrying. Thunder and lightning. Praise the Lord. Question two. Instead of being consumed with the possession of, of, for earthly things, how are children of God admonished? First Timothy 6, 5 to 10. Sister Rose, First Timothy 6, 5 to 10. First Timothy 6, 5 to 10. I'm going to ask somebody in green to answer you because you're reading in green. Somebody in green. Probably your name is green. Probably you're in green and red and <laughs> anything green. Some green are going to answer, so just focus. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and the destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness, mm. from such withdraw thyself. Jesus. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful mm. lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Mm. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Thank you, Sister Wendy. Please sit. Sister Robinson. Oh, Lady in green. What you got? Give me one thing you pull from First Timothy 6. Instead of being consumed with the position of for earthly things, our children of God admonished. Praise him. When you're godly and you're content, blessing follow. It, that in itself is a blessing. Did anybody pick up anything else? Sister Green, you pick up anything else from the scripture that you want to share? Sister, yeah, that's correct. That's the answer we can write in our quarter. I'm not saying, is, did, did you see anything else you want to add from the scripture? Okay, also, praise the Lord. Praise him. Give her a mic now, man. Give her a mic now. Give her a mic now. Oh, I might let catch up, is it? Praise him. <laughs> praise God. I greet praise you him. in the word, the name of Jesus. Greetings. Also, the reading said that we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we will carry out nothing. So let us be contented. And that doesn't mean that if, as children of God, instead we wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health. So if we just got married for argument's sake and we have a one womb, be contented with the one womb, but strive to have two. Don't stay because godliness... With contentment is gained, so you're going to feel contented in the one room. Work towards another room, because you're going to have children. Amen. But in the same time, when you have the one room, don't grudge anybody else. Just keep it clean, make it look nice, make it look entertaining. But at the same time, not really stay there and feel contented. So it's two different kind of contentment mm -hmm. there. So we have to work towards She's saying it. don't turn wordless. Yes, right. She's saying, don't, don't, don't just say that this is my lot and my part. 
She's saying that there is there is there should still be a spirit to thrive. To show people that when you come to Christ, there's a blessing that follow you. You start with one room and you're gonna end up with more than one room. Because the Bible says it's gonna multiply it a hundredfold. If if I if I if I if I um if I invest in this one room, love, cleanliness. Being frugal, saving, and whatever, God is going to turn one into two. I never seen a person come to church and live the right way and start with one room and just dead with one room. Me never see it. The Bible says I was young. I know I'm old. Mr. People die and they're not rich, you know, but me tell a bridging, they come up. And maybe them not rich when they're dead, but men and children. Praise the Lord, church. So, Virginia, I can speak because when we moved to content, it was one big room. It big like this. My father and my uncle built it. One big room. And the, and the only partition was my parents' room. It was, it was just one big studio. Until it turned into what it looked like now. It started with wood, not concrete. It hot in the belly. Hot, 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 hot. Murmuring. Anybody see the juice of me, I say? Instead of giving God thanks, it used to. Bridget, I remember the time when I was when me when me I sit down and Bridget when me look, Bridget, believe me, my, my mom would keep the place clean, but because of the structure of the place, anything from outside can come in. Every lizard and green, every every country rat and and crow and lizard, they come in. They, everybody say, oh, the mobilios, we see the mobilios. Yeah, that's all finished. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every night they come, some catch bat. Some are catching mosquito. Some are being spider web. But this house. Hello. So, Brother Fraser, in those days, I did not complain about heat. It was about everything that could be on a ceiling. You could hear the rain falling. Instead of saying, boy, it put you to sleep and it sound good. We said, Daddy, uh, the rubber they want to put on the nail them now work because it's a drip through. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Anybody ever live in a zinc roof? Yes. Jesus, anybody? Oh, pray. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. The leak, when you read a fire, you have to put, you have chimney, so you have bucket, you so. oh, no, 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 I'm not talking about. Some people know what I'm not talking about. Bless the name of Jesus. Sister Green said, preacher, you know what I'm talking about. Preacher, we have come back from the time when some of the young people are like, what is a chimney? <laughs> they don't know what we, they said, you have chimneys in Jamaica. I did not say chimney. There ain't no Santa in Jamaica. We got no, 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 no. Holy Ghost. The tile, it was so far, you had to have something close by in the night. And when the rain started to fall, you have to put it to catch water. PL. And now you have, now we have, we have our decking. The wind could have blow, the breeze blow, and it can't blow your house in. But why hot? When you complain, why in a hat? Why we, we can't take in a, in a hat? God make it make it sound so hot. I will never remember we have zinc and we, when Russia come in there, Russia come in there, Glissada come in there. We never remember that. No, we are complaining about heat. Then God give me AC. When we get the bill, boy, bill high. Good God have mercy, Mr. Pierre. 2,000 Jamaican for the bill, now 15,000. Are you already old, you know? Boy, the bill high. Boy, God, you have to do something about that bill, yeah. You go off at God, bread, bread, you never build a more on a prayer pan because you need consecration. It starts from murmuring. Come on, preacher. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise, Bridget, I could, I could take this another level. I'm going to stop right there because no, it's two o'clock. It's two, first and two. Thank you, Sister Robinson. And Sister, Sister Rose for reading. And Sister Green for stirring us up with that wonderful answer. Praise God. So how are we cautioned to conduct ourselves? Philippians 2, 14 and 15, the memory verse. Sister Tapper wants to tap into that one. What you got? Or we caution to conduct ourselves. This is a message to everybody in here. Pastor and people. What, is, what are we cautioning the memory verse to do? All right. Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, 
that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Sister Tapper, how are we cautioned to conduct ourselves? Um, without murmurings and disputings. Somebody praise the Lord, amen. Do we know why? Did we get why from the scripture? Yes. Do we get why? Why did it say? Brother Fraser, because people are watching me. People are listening to me. Anybody get the juice? People are listening to us. Sister Danielle, when you said why? The world which is crooked and perverse, they twist and hold on to your moment of failure. To your moment of murmuring. And they run with that. So brethren, be a caution to conduct ourselves with Christian behavior. Do all things. So Sister Janida and Sister, Sister Joanna go to high school without murmuring. Next semester, the courses might be a little harder. I said it the other week, life does not get easier. It's how we handle hard. That's how we overcome. Learning how to handle hard better. Life is not going to get easier. I'm recognizing, um, Brother Green, that at my age, that I'm going to get older and things are going to be different. I'm going to be dealing with the things that I wasn't dealing with 10 years ago. Right. Life is not going to get easier. Uh, but with experience, I'm able to handle art better. Sister Joanna, high school is not going to just get easier. But you're with your maturity. Remember, you didn't go to high school when you were five. You're going to high school when you're... Um, age appropriate at an age appropriate time when you're ready to go, right? When you are when you can handle certain things. Back in my days, they let you go to high school, Sister Wendy, when you pass common entrance. That's kind of a madness sometimes. You work we work off for some people, but not for everybody. I have friends who were lost, by the way, because we were thrust into a, a situation where we we're in class with 16 year olds. You can't have somebody we are 11 and somebody we are 17 or 16 in the same class. That's two different mindsets. So just because you can do the work don't mean you, 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 you are, you, you know, it's two different things. One grade maybe, but you're talking about, think about a boy who's 16, Brother Fraser, or 17 in a class with a daughter who is 14. There's a two, a two different um, mindsets going on. I'm just saying, church. When you're in high school, just have, do it without murmuring and dispute things. When you're in college, are you signing up for college? You know? It's a tertiary institution. The work is harder than high school. Oh, boy. Mm. The other day, preacher, I was looking at, I still have them packed up. I haven't even cleaned up yet. I was looking at the, the things that were piled up because I was studying. And I look at them and I say, oh my goodness. I mean, do it to myself. Because it was there by itself, sister Julie, I'm going to take it up. So when it, when it, when it work, I lick you. Thank God. I keep pushing. Sister Cheryl, no more complaining. Are you, she said, okay. I'm calling you out. No more complaining. Are you take it up. Push through, sister. Push through. Because at the end of it, there's a blessing. Sister, sister, sister Andy. Vanji began also. Me and my baby. Meow, 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 meow. Me said, me too old to go on. No, she has a degree. Amen. And she could take care of things till, till things take care of things now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I said, when I said to her years ago, I said, you're setting an example for your daughters. Because you have all daughters. You want them to know that you started something and you finished it, you persevered. Sister Danielle, you see her to get you. See Sister Tanya get you. And Sister Amelia finished high school now and wanna, she wanted to follow in the same example. Amen. Hello? Amen. Stop murmuring and complain. Push forward. Shall we praise the Lord? Amen. I'm going to say it again. It might not happen for you, Sister Maxine, but your children and your grandchildren. You talk about Dre. You talk about your grandchildren. Guess what happens, sweetie? The, the, the things that you may not have experienced, it's going to happen to them, but don't murmur and complain. So God, thank you for them. God, I bless you for them. God, you might not do it for me yet, but God, do it for them. Be a prayer to grandmother's prayer. Anybody want to bless God? Praise the name of Jesus. Question six. Oh. I'm just seeing if you're awake. Everybody awake. 
Nobody know why I was sick. So I'm going to go back and forth then. Israel's journey was extended because of murmuring. According to Numbers 14. How then can we stay away from this type of behavior? So you want to let us read it? Let us revisit Sister Campbell. Um, Numbers 14, 26 to 37. Let us identify. As she reads, we identify the ways they were murmuring. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with thee this, this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Mm. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to, according to your old number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land to the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephthah and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones which ye said unto be a prey, them will I bring in and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, mm. your carcasses, Jeez. they shall fall in, the in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your wardom until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all the, this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent mm. to search the land, Jesus. who returned Jesus. and make all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report unto the land died by the plague before the Lord. Somebody praise God, no man. Praise Somebody praise God. Praise Anybody notice what going on? They didn't include verse 25, but you notice the exit where they come off of? Yeah. Anytime you see the Red Sea, that at the exit you come off of our 40 year journey. My God. Watch me, church. He says, Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. That was the exit to 40 years. When you come off of the exit, the sister Anna, 40 years I'm a look for. So, church of the living God, when you see the Red Sea, you can see God's glory on a 40 year journey. And it depends on your murmuring or it depends on your, your gratitude. Praise the Lord, somebody. I noticed many things here. We have discussed a lot of good discussions today. Um, but we noticed that they were speaking and God was listening. Anybody get that, Juice? Say unto them, as truly as I live, said the Lord, as he have spoken in mine ears. So will I do. The things that murmur, God will make it. God, God listen to it like it's a request. God make us tell him. He will dead. Oh, no, no, I'm a teach. You're ugly like your pupa. Somebody gonna love your child because of the looks. And really take care of them. Because God will bless your generation. You're not going to come to nothing. Because you're angry, you're frustrated, you tell your child, they're not going to come to nothing. You see that one day? They're going to prosper. They're going to find good people. They're going to have. Mr. Baxter, talk to me now, man. They're going to marry nice Baxters and have nice young men playing music and just nice. Sister Baxter, tell Brother Baxter, let me just say, can you know? Praise his name. God said to them, 
After the virgin, don't make, God, don't make God number the words that you say. You say 150 words or 150 days your way. Some of you remember in those long and continuous. You know? Anybody else want to tell me one or two things I got from this? Because it's a discourse. I'm not spending all day because we've been doing a lot of discussion. Anybody else have something that they found in it? Don't murmur, saints. The murmuring is not a good thing. I'm going to really try to be, to be better. Sometimes my colleagues tell me that, that um, I need to say more. Because I try not to complain. I say I'm choosing to not complain. Sometimes tough things are hard. But you just have to just push through. I'm trying to be intentional, but me don't like murmuring. Me don't like it, you know. It's something I don't like. Yeah. I'm not a complainer. And I don't like complaining. And um, sometimes I say to, to, to myself, so why are we complaining? It don't fix anything. I don't remember run again. Question five. Quick question is. Sister Marlon. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Pastor, on top of um, when you just started, um, I was thinking about the question you asked um, about, um, like Sister Baxter, you tell her some um, ways of women murmuring, yeah. right? But then I, as I thought about it, you know, as some women get older, yeah. you have um, hormonal change where some of those things fit. Uh. It just seems like it is complaining. Uh. So I'm saying to myself, is it really complaining when I think I'm man in my Bible at all. <laughs> praise oh. so praise what, the Lord. The no, but you, you get what I'm saying, Pastor? Yes, because man. some things, Brother John, praise the Lord. Some things, it he fits. He said, no, I'm not praising the Lord on that <laughs> You hear what but she's saying? You like, get what I'm men, saying, like Pastor? Like menopause and stuff like that. Hormonal changes can make you... Do act some of the stuff with sister back, that Sister Baxter um, put so out there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Better, better, no, better but phrase is fighting back. No, but I'm not talking about that, that kind of pr those kind of people. I'm talking when about nice, the natural. nice, nice person with us, with, with all the teen all the time, and then let's go in there, menopause. <laughs> I'm messing with you. But I, I think her point is taken, though. Sometimes that, that is why we have to be patient with people, right? Because sometimes, as you said, it, it's not a personality that the person have, they don't have the, the stigma of being miserable, but then. They get easily frustrated um, um, with with the hormonal changes, and I think there's a there's a there's an important point to it, but I don't want us to use it as an excuse to be perpetual or continuous in your murmuring or your complaining. It's not an excuse, cause you know your age, you know things are changing, and you should expect some things to fight. How to manage, manage, menopause can be managed. Yes. Carry fan, come at church. Yes. Yes. Get, get, a, get a fan. <laughs> Sit on an event. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sister Baxter, have a phone fan or whatever that thing is. Get a phone fan. Is a phone fan? No, it's a water aquatic fan. Aquatic fan. You give me blood water by you too. Oh, they're not me at all, but I agree to find it fascinating. <laughs> Managing menopause. <laughs> oh my God. Go keep going, my beloved. Praise him. Yeah. Heat. We're talking about mental. I know. Um, hormonal changes. I know. Frustrations. Yes. Not just the, phys just the, 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 the heat and all that stuff. I get it's, what it's, you're saying. Yes. And I accept the point. I think it's a valid point. She's saying that um, there are, there are some, some things, and I'm going to say it though. What we're studying today is, is not, is, we're not studying, um, that's not what we're, we're, we're attacking. No. We're trying to attack the, the, um, the, 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 the sin of murmuring. Okay. Menopause is something that you can't control. It's going to come. Andropause is gonna come. Yeah. That's for the man. Yeah. Um, it's, but 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 having the mindset because murmuring is a mindset. So you, when it says, "Thank you, Lord, to allow me to reach this age," because I'm going like we never want to get to this age. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that I get to 53, 56, 57. For tomorrow, it's it, it early. He said, "Thank God, I'm able to get to this age." Yeah. Um, 
Thank you, Lord. I realize that I am so damn sensitive. My uncle died the other day. I'm not, I'm not cursing God. What I said, God, my grandfather died from it. My father is sick from it. No, my uncle died from this. So I am going to be better with how I conduct myself. So that is where that is the difference with murmuring and and and, and family. Me not, me not clear it. I'm gonna do something different. I plan to do some things different. And when my wife gives me a portion, I don't say, boy, how you go with that? Man, a monster. <laughs> come on, uh, yeah, come on. Uh, me, Bridget, me see, me see, me see, Sister Vante, she was doing a presentation, they was showing the poor. And the man said, that's enough for me. Yeah, no, no, that's enough for me. <laughs> and Bridget, to what I'm saying, that was the talk, like, that, that other people were working in the office, but... Dan, Dan, Dan can't do that. And it's okay. I'm a virgin still, but I'm just saying, you got to be careful. You can't just say, I'm not going to eat healthy. Virgin, virgin you, want, you want to live to 70, 80, 90. And I understand the point about physical work, and you need more calories. We get that. So there's a, there's a true, um, that's, I'm not fighting that. But the mindset is what I'm struggling about. That what you're saying, I make no sense to me because I'm living a different life. No, you still need to change something. Because if you if you if you eat that ten o'clock at night, you will die. Diabetes and sugar will kill you if you take up that. But if you eat it in the morning at twelve o'clock, maybe you have a better thing. So, Bridget, let us find the joy in what in in the, in the teaching. So, Sister Marlon, we take your point, Brother Fraser. Yes, take it quickly and let me praise him. Scripture that um, in um, what's that? First Timothy five that talk about the, uh, contentment and contentment yes. with godliness. You need a mic, man. Bless him, John. Praise the Lord. Praise him. So I had a question based on um, I believe it's First Timothy five that talk about those that pierce themselves for the riches of this world. Yeah, and man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contentment and all that. You know. Um, I was asking like, oh, you have one standard of measurement for like. You know, you have a foot and, you know, you have 12 inches. Mm -hmm. And that's standard. Does, con does contentment look the same for everybody? Mm. Wow. <laughs> so, does godliness look the same for everybody? Um, Brother Fraser, there may be different extents, but I think there's a minimum standard. So godliness for me may look a little bit different from Sister Joanna. Because I've, I, I'm in the church a little bit longer and I have more responsibilities, right? So for example, God's expectations of me, for example, as a pastor, for example, is to, for example, Sister Riley, give you counseling. You, you can't get that from Joanna, I can tell you that. Joanna is not at the stage yet to, to call you together. Because there's an authority and a kind of thing that you build up and, and relationships to get to that point. So what I'm saying is that, but there's still a minimum standard that God expects of everybody sitting in here. One, if you're far below that standard, you're going to be lost. You could have been passed a little more or just come in a little more. Just so there's a minimum standard. Oh, no, I know. The scripture says there was a man who came in at the 11th hour. And he got the same pay as the man that was there from man and kill out himself. But they got the same pay. So that tells me that there's a minimum standard of righteousness and contentment too. There's a minimum standard expected. The man that has been through the Job trial. The man that God has shown himself to. The man that see the Red Sea part, Brother Fraser. You have more experience. So God is expecting everybody to be of this minimum level of contentment. But you who he has brought through the Red Sea should not have said that about him. The children who don't know better who don't see it as a little fish. They just not a little bit. They don't know what they say. This was just dry. This was just a sea. They're just excited. We're, oh, we're going to go through the sea. Oh my gosh. Look at them. Look at them got saved. Those who were called praise and who are who going who gonna to die. Them that got saved. So God has a minimum standard. To me, brother Fraser, just to answer you quickly, the, the, it, it, it may look different for different people, but there's a minimum that God expects for you to be saved. 
Anybody get it? Anybody get it? I'm going to say it again. Anybody get it? For example, I am married. So I have a wife to think about. My son is not married. So he can't think about adultery like that. He must, he must think about something different. Maybe fornication, but not adultery. A, the more you grow in God and the more you get, is the more the, the standard I go up. You have more things to check off. Anybody get what I'm saying? My son don't have to worry about tight pain. But me can't if God's tight. Because me at work. And if me not, anybody get what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is not that Joanna is not a good Christian because she don't have the responsibility I have. But she's not working, so she don't have a tights problem right now. I'm just saying, but there's still a minimum standard. Praying and keeping the commandments, all ten. But she don't have this tight standard. I have the tight standard. I'm just going to trying to show the church what I mean by minimum standard, but some people have a more responsibilities. Anybody get the juice? All right. Better first, I hope I helped you. God bless you. Number, where we at now? Give me enough. Give me some. Give me two readers for this. Can two readers help? Can two readers come? Yes, sir. All right. Which one do you want to read, brother? Right? The first part or the last part? First part. First part is the can be read 31 to 33. Go ahead, brother, brother um, White. What are some other undesirable attitudes that we may are guilty of that will arouse God's anger? Numbers 11, 1 to 6. And when the people complain, it displeased the Lord. Jesus. And the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled. Mm. And the fire of the Lord burned among them. And consumed them that were in the mid amongst the part of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Thank you, Jesus. And he called the name of that place Tabrath, because the fire of the Lord burned amongst them. And the mixed multitude that were among them fell lost him. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumber, mm. and the melon, mm. and the leeks, and the onion, and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna <laughs> before our eyes. Ah, brother White, the one I wrote, preacher. But answer your part, preacher. What are some of the other undeserved attitudes that we are guilty of that arose God's anger? When well, I think Pastor, is verse 5. We remember mm. what, to, what to eat in Egypt. We are comparing the time when in Egypt to the time now when we God um, saved us from the, 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 the right of the Egyptian. That God not able. We are telling ourselves that God not able to keep us. Amen. That's one of the things I look at. God bless you, sir. Anybody get what's going on? I'm coming to you, Sister Campbell. Church, stop talking about who you used to have. Yes, man. Fraser, you preach you preach all the time. You can't go back to being. You see, I, Bridget, when I see Brother Fraser jumping up and dancing, it could be convention or it could be a here or anywhere. I leave him alone. You know why? Because he used to do it for Capleton. He used to do it for Sizzler. You're on the line. He used to do it for Sizzler. He tell us all oh, he used to dress in a khaki and go. He used to do it for them. So when you see my do it for, when you see my go like to leave him alone, Bridget. Please don't, don't criticize. I'm telling you. I love him because I realize that you have some pre preacher. If you don't, if you, if you don't embrace your new your dance for Christ, you're gonna start to say, Boy, I remember the days when we used to do my thing for. You. And that's what is happening here, Sister Julene. And, and I'm not I'm not gonna keep you any longer, church. I, I see the problems. Some of us are talking about the old partners we used to have, the how much woman we used to have, the how much this we used to do. Or we used to, we used to take up how much thousand dollars do this, or we used to take up how much whatever do that. Let the God not do nothing for we. I love how one of the preachers in the convention say, You have some things out there wait for we. Clam me there and talk about some, 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 um, in your most on this is Mr. God, we research them. They're nice. Not for the church. So when God preserve you, be grateful. Young people, we are talking about all this. No, God preserve you. I see some advertisement with some people that you dig out from the smoking. Then you throw at God. So, Bridget, when you're free, give God glory.
Sister, Sister Joanna, with the bamba, when me say na her, me say, me say pull long this and pull long that and pull, I'm pulling long strong. Is that right? Virgin, God have some business to fix. Can we do better? Stop complaining. If you never listen, God will listen to you. God is listening to us. Complainers in Zion, God is hearing you. And God can accommodate your complaint. That is what we learned here. We want fish. We want cucumber. We want leek. We want... They say, all oh, we see in front of you are manna. Manna, 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 Phrase it. Okay. Okay. Pure man. Sister Joanna, take up 31 to 33. You see what they were saying there? Praise the Lord. Mm. Uh, Numbers 11, 31 to 33. And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails up from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it, as it were a day's journey. On this side, and as it was, as it were, a day's journey on the other side around the camp, as it, as it were, two cubits high upon the face of the earth, <coughs> and the people stood up all that day and all that night and on the next day, and they gathered quails. He that gathered least gathered ten. Homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh ha yet, ha was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of God was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Somebody help me preach. You may sit, my Lord. Look, look around you. What do you see? Do you see crumbs or do you see vomit? I want the church to listen to what I said before you look. And don't look physically at your seat. There's nothing there. I want you to look in your life. Do you see vomit or do you see crumbs? See, God responded to Israel in numbers by feeding them. But when he feed them, it come through them. Anybody get what I say? But I'm saying it's on the ground. Nobody wear a chop can just keep it in. Nobody, nobody wear, hey, we are coming, man. What may I say? Look on the ground. You will know if I bless God, I bless you. You see when Jesus fed the 5,000? What you saw on the ground were crumbs. And they were able to get a 12 baskets. I'm asking you, is God blessing you or is he rat? Full. Okay, on the line, I want everybody to listen to what I say now. Look in your life. Do you see vomit or do you see crumbs? Because what you see is an indication of is God blessing you or is he cursing you with what he's blessing you with? Okay. If you see crumbs, you're good. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Here's some other problem. We have a, give me some problem, Brother Green. There was an old lady, right? Who kept telling her granddaughter to take the clothes off the line and wash them because they don't wash properly. And she kept doing it. What she didn't realize was that the window where the old lady was looking through was dirty. But I get it? Okay, I'm so look again. Do you see crumbs? If your glass, if you have crumbs in your glass, you'll see crumbs. Hello? <laughs> if you have crumbs in your eyeglass, yeah, look, you'll see crumbs. I'm saying to look good. And brethren, this look in the canvas, look now. I want you to do fast and I pray and look. Say, God, what am I seeing in my life? Is it vomit or is it crumbs? Is it something that I can pick up and feed somebody else? Or is it something that if somebody eat it, then backslidden? I don't get what I say. Because backside like a dog to his... You know. What may I say? If somebody take up this for eat, I backside in that, you know. What I'm, what I'm taking up from around me, can somebody eat it? Maybe I'm trying to go too deep. But murmuring, delays and depletes. Do I say, do, do what? Deplete the blessing. Anybody see what happened here? 
Some more should have been a blessing turn into a massive curse. Virgin, I apologize. The time is gone. Can I, can I run to the next question? Is a note? Where are we at? Six. Read up for six. Virgin, it's, four, it's 485. Let's go. That's right. You gotta go, man. Let's go. Is this the tangent of the First Corinthians 10, 1 to 5 and 10? Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud Hallelujah. and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses Jesus. in the cloud and in the sea. Mm. And did all eat the same spiritual meat, mm -hmm. and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Neither murmur ye, as, ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Will God be lenient with us when we are found practicing this ungrateful attitude, Sister Campbell? No. Give me some evidence on your reading. It said that God was not well pleased with them, the children of Israel, and it said neither murmur as some of them also murmured because they were destroyed of the destroyer. Shall we praise the Lord? Virgin, God is always listening, you know. I remember, I remember the last time I, my sister get a little, um, Dion get a little, a little, a little touch. It was a joke, but it was fun. That was the last. She didn't get beaten on like that much. But she got a little, she was come once about mine. She said she's not going to church. So I feel like we're going to church. So I said, me, bloop, bloop, bloop. Me say, oh my gosh, my father was passing and the man just that. The, 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 the bell was just flying. Mr. said, daddy, daddy, she don't do nothing. Oh my gosh, mommy, daddy, she do not do do nothing. Believe me, you might not start like that. No, no, no. Mr. said, mommy, Mr. said, I'm going to see it, mommy, nothing, nothing. That, that, daddy said, she cost bad money at my house. I <laughs> said, Mr. said, mommy, may I tell you the truth? Behind me and Dian, there's some money. She cost the bad money. So my mother said, Dian, wait for me. Daddy, <laughs> daddy said, I said, oh, actually. She only thing she says that she not going to church. She does she don't feel like going to church today. He said, Oh, I'm just gone. Everybody laughed because we realized that it was not so much. It, it was serious, but still the way he did it, yeah. But yeah, we don't make those mistakes anymore. <laughs> but you know, murmur, God is listening. And God, God, you might not say it in a way, but God God have his interpretation of what you're saying. Because God knows your heart. God and I like man where God I try to figure it out, you know, God knows what you are think. God knows what you're thinking. You know your thoughts are far off. Amen, amen. So when you try to scam God, God knows you are ready. And God will fix it for you. Amen. One way or the other. Can the church stand? You've been sitting for a long time. I've been saying that every week. Let's stand and read a note. Whether we accept together, church, whether we accept it or not, according to the scriptures, when we murmur and complain, it is a sin punishable by death. It has been said that when we murmur, we agree with the devil that God is unfair and incompetent. Let us ponder these things, lest we experience the wrath of God. Anybody want that to happen to them? Who can stomach God's wrath? Who can stomach God W? Okay. You ready, love? We often say murmuring is a sign of ingratitude. But how does God view and respond to it? Numbers 14. Could you just tell me, because we have read it many times today. But this is the third time we have read it. Tell me what, tell me, explain the answer to me. How does God view and respond to murmuring? Tell us what happened with the rebellion. Just give us the answer. It, um, they, um, they, they were saying that... Um, the Lord brought them um, into the land to mm -hmm. fall by the sword, mm -hmm. that our wives and our children should be a prey. Mm -hmm. we are, were it not better for us to return to Egypt? Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, one to another, let us make a captain. You know, they were even thinking of 
Say, all right, who are going to lead us? I um, Maria lead you. I could go back. I want a leader because I want to go back go experience the leaks and the <laughs> garlic and whatever. And, oh, you know, okay. um, and even in now, now we may not ask for a leader, but um, we already lead ourselves in our mind because some of the time we backslide a long time before we actually leave church. In our mind, we disassociate ourselves from everything until we are outside of church. So we are sitting in church. We have Pastor Murmurer, Deacon Murmurer, Evangelist Murmurer. We got Captain Murmurer. And you get what I go on? So, brethren, we have CEO Murmurer. This man said, make, we are captain. If we go back. That means they reject Moses, you know. Ungrateful, unreasonable. This is a person who risks his life and follow the Lord to come for you. And some of the times, brethren, I think we miscalculate what we're coming from. I, I really apologize for the long thing today. But let me just finish today. Some of us act like where we're coming from is so much better than where we are now. And brother White, we know the truth. We didn't suffer like that. We didn't suffer. We didn't suffer. Some of we didn't suffer. We didn't suffer. We were suffering. Some of you are going like, because we experienced some good life now. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, all right. Me and one man, me and one man, I watch what they call sufferer. That's their name, sufferer. Mr. Man with the pan and care, sufferer. So when we go on like that, we did all go, oh, Jesus come take you up and mash up with life. But we need for the better, you know? I'm going to say it again. When Christ took me up, he did not destroy our lives. He made our lives better. Because some of we would have gone them, would have, would have, would have, would have, would have, would have in a prison. Because the, the, the patience we God giving now for deal with the things that we would not have it. Some of we rough in a church. We rough. Can you imagine we're in a world? We're a rougher. We'd be a sufferer rougher. Sister Anne, seven. You don't be like the woman at the well. Because the talk, we gone. Talk to me now. Richard, some of you are going like so with a sticky talk. We're not, we're not going a long time. So stop acting. And stop dealing with God like God is punk. I got a junk. Got a done. I got no way. So please behave yourself and stop murmur. In here, in here, shower me. Water cool, water hot, water lukewarm. This, that, the brethren, stop and stop. And God, but we're too ungrateful. Ingratitude has as, as caused the church to, to be at a level which, oh my God, we cannot, we, 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 it's so called even the power of the church. Are we finished? Oh, conclusion. All right. Everybody, please, anybody who want to do better, stand up and read this. Anybody who want to grow, anybody who, anybody who want, this is a, this is an optional one now. Anybody who want come out a murmuring, come out of this a senior. We want one new leaf. We want one better, we want, we want one better trajectory. We want us, we want, we want something different and nice. We want, we want God look at me and smile. Hey, this is your one. Read now. Put on this. After studying this lesson, we should be better able to accept. Where we are and wait patiently until God moves us to where he wants us to be. Let us learn the art of contentment which will keep us from murmuring and watch God work things out for us. Shall we praise the Lord? Enjoy the chop suey. The cabbage and the, the, cabbage and the little tubes of chicken. It's okay. And respect, respect, embrace where you are now. Because things will be better tomorrow, you know. I didn't say easier. I said better. Shall we praise the Lord? But we worship the Lord. We praise his holy name. We have come to the end of the lesson. Last word. Anybody have something where they build that can read with me? Anybody have something where they build they want to share? Like a quote, a little quote, like to something that we keep with this week. Something from the lesson. Anybody have something they want to share? Something nice they write. I love the one that Sister Rhonda said. Anybody have something else? Something nice. You can come up with it or... Anybody hear what I'm saying? Like a little... Not a point, but anything nice that you can, can come up with based on the lesson. 
like a pledge, something, a little, a line, a quote. Could you read what you said again? Let me give them an example of what I'm talking about. About the parents, honoring your parents, and to, they, they, they would, Rhonda and Jerry 2023 says, Somebody has come up with something. Come on, Sister Wendy. Come on, Sister Green. Come on, Brother Green. Come on, come on, Sister Fraser. Sister Top. I want, where are my poets? Where are the people? Sister Joanna. Come on, Sister Curtis. Write something down. Give me a quote. Something you can, you can run with this week. A fight quote. Go ahead, Sister. Go ahead, Sister. Go ahead, Sister. Um, somebody, Sister Buchanan on the line. Creative. Come, Sister Rhonda. Give me something. All right. So uh, we have murmuring, oh, murmuring affects the way we honor our parents, right? Mm -hmm. So we said it dims the love your parents has for you in your eyes. That, that made me really think, like, imagine, it, you, are, you are shutting off the light from your life. You miss the joy of being, of being a child, of being somebody's child when you murmur. Anybody else want to give me some millennial, some, some, some somebody? You have some sister, Shakartes? Run, come, run, come and read it. Give her a mic, something. Sister Lenny, you have something nice? Give me something, man. Be creative. Better try. Come on. Brother Jonathan Baxter. Come on. Jay Van Camp. Oh, no. Somebody. Brother Robbins. Oh, you're so quiet today. What happened? You had punishment? Oh. Give me a mic, man. Give me something nice to say. Sister Cartes, go ahead, sis. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Um, I wrote down, murmuring is a mindset, so take on the mindset of gratitude. Jesus. When you get that? Murmuring is a mindset, so take on the mindset of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in. Anybody want nothing better than that? That's good. Come on, Brother Robinson. Um, mine is, to those who murmur, they in their own life, but to those who find pleasure in all things, everlasting rates night. Um, to those who murmur, they end their own life. To those who murmur, they end their own life. But to those who find pleasure in all things. But to those who find pleasure, I'm, I'm, just, re, I'm just interpreting yes. it in a regular voice. I don't know why it's deep. So. <laughs> to those who find, what you say? Pleasure in all things. Pleasure in all things. Everlasting waits nigh. Everlasting awaits nigh. Now, better tell you. Is this the old way of saying it's near? We just kept on the man and I go on like a a big thing go on, you know. Are you ready, Sister Anne? With something, give me something, Sister Anne. Sister Fraser, are you me awake, man? You know. Me just go and talk to you. Just let me see how come run. Praise the Lord, Sister Anne. Give me something. Um, it said desperately, helplessly, longing. Jesus. I cry mm. quietly, patiently, loving. God replied. Jesus. What is around you? Jesus, <laughs> what is our own? They that wait upon crowds. the Lord shall renew their strength. That's where you're from. Shall we praise the Lord? I love it. Anybody get what's going on? Look around if you see vomit and crumbs. Anybody else? Jerry, you have something nice? Sister Green, you have something nice? Give me something. You know, if you're not feeling nice, something, something to think about this week. Give her a mic. Give her a microphone. Come, my beloved. Let come, my no, no. Don't let God lose you. Because it will be sad, sad, the bitter way. Holy Zion, show.